Hello and welcome back to episode 50 of the Rat City Radio Podcast. I'm your host, Perry the Pig, and with me today is a special co-host. Thank you, Curse. Or the, the Curse? Curse? The Curse BG? What, what, what's the proper name that I can be calling you? Whatever you want, man. TC is good. The Curse, Curse, whatever. Oh, TC curse is a good BG. one. I do like TC. Yeah, TC, thank you so much for joining me. Dread is out in the world of Path of Exile. Of course, today is Friday, which means it's the launch of the settlers of Catan uh, expansion for path of exile there's a lot of people doing stuff over there and we figured that for the people who are still interested in last epoch including myself struggling to make my next shaman build we wanted to take a moment out of this friday afternoon and talk about the best kind of content a tier list so we're going to be making absolutely objective uh zero subjectivity tier list content we're going to be rating all the masteries based on whatever you want to rate them on i will not be taking any comments for this video but before we jump into that curse i want to welcome you back to the podcast of course you've uh, you've been here before but for those of you who might not know or for those of people in the audience who might not know who you are rtc um why don't you give yourself a little introduction no thanks for the invite man i appreciate it uh i guess i'm a streamer but more of a gamer, gamer first, streamer fifth, you know, somewhere in there, you know, I have to deal with kids, full-time job and everything in between and somehow trying to manage a few hours of streaming every now and then. And I'm happy with whatever I can get, whatever the wife lets me get away with. <laughs> and so I, I, yeah? I, I think, I think you built quite a reputation for yourself in the, uh, uh, in the streaming community and for people who are looking for like, like in depth like i, I want to say spreadsheet simulator builds but that's not what i should be saying uh more more precise builds in last epoch um the first thing that i remember you doing in the world of last epoch was kind of getting a feel for all the builds that existed and you just played everything and you made a spreadsheet and you got first-hand experience with a whole bunch of different builds so that you knew how to how to compare things like you knew what currently existed and then you could like take that and make it your own um, I also know, for those of you out there, uh, if you like cast speed and attack speed, every build that I see TC put together has like 300 attack and cast speed. So that's the kind of thing you're into. I think I think TC is the uh, is the place to be for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta have that cast speed. You gotta have that attack speed. Whatever it is you're running, I like. Usually things seem to scale with attack speed and cast speed in such a way where you generate survivability and damage at the same time by getting a lot of speed so works out for me that way awesome but yeah so so what we have here so what we have here today is a tier list of all the masteries in last epoch and i i have an initial idea of how i would like to go about doing this like rating some of them good rating some of them bad Uh, i have i have one particular criteria that i talked with you ahead of time um but is is there some something else on your mind when it comes to like rating a mastery good or bad like if if someone came into your twitch stream and said like hey is this mastery good or bad like what how how do you go about answering that question yeah i would think of it the, the two most important things the three let's say three most important things for me would be boss killing single target dps clear so like mono clear especially nowadays it's become even more important with the XP slash favor meta, and then number three, survivability. Those are the three top tier metrics, and there's gonna be a few secondary metrics like leveling, progression, speed, might be a more of a secondary metric for me. Um, what else? Th- th- those are probably the, the most important things, but the top three for sure. So are all the primeless masteries gonna be like F tier because they have awful leveling before like level 15? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're one yeah, of the slowest. They're all, all, <laughs> they're all terrible. <laughs> okay, masteries, all the primaries must throw in there. Uh, yeah, all right. So uh, I, I made sure, and I know I know the screen's going to be a little bit small for people who are watching on YouTube or, or Twitch right now, but I made sure that all the icons here technically have the word under them. It's going to be a tiny bit small. Maybe we can make it bigger, but these are all the, uh, the official icons. I, are these the official icons? I think these might be old icons. No, these are the current icons for all yeah, the right. uh, all the masteries. And I wanted to make sure that the word was listed under the mastery because I do not know any of these icons. Hey, thank uh, you. I just not not a single one of them. But let's let's start out. Um, let let's start out with something. Me, oh, go ahead. Let me ask you a question. Sorry, sorry. Let me ask you a question. 
first in terms of the rating system tell me what you think should we put a little bit more emphasis for within mastery ranking like relative the three masteries that are within a class should we try and group them together and give them a little bit of independence away from the other 12 because i feel like certain classes with their three subclasses are going to be way ahead no i think and... i think that's okay because anything that's a mage gets flame word so they're all at least a tier right at least i guess I, yeah I, I mean, they're all at least a tier <laughs> I was actually thinking about that, you know, okay, so we, we got a couple things to talk about before we actually start this tier list, but I was thinking about this ahead of time, and it's like, you know, if if the only thing your mastery gave you was, like, Flame Ward, how good would the rest of your class, like, how how much would that carry the rest of your stuff? Like, what what's the very worst? Like, maybe maybe your opinion is, like, Marksman's bad or something, um, but with, like, the, we're, we're not going to talk about individual ranking right now. But like, let's say in your opinion, marksman is bad. If you take marksman, the absolute worst in this hypothetical scenario, and you put flame ward on it, how how high up would that raise it? Like, would that make it C tier? Would that make it B tier? I don't know. Like flame ward and stuff like that. Like flame ward and volatile reversal. Um, those kinds of <laughs> things really do a lot to carry these classes. And like, we could do like, you know, mage builds without flame ward. Or like if if they didn't have flame ward or uh like sentinel builds if they didn't have volatile reversal but like that's that's so much gray area yeah i don't i don't know about that you, you make me feel so bad currently i'm running a non-flame ward mage build no <laughs> hopefully you're super tanky um i don't know man I, I i see people use like no uh holy aura periodically on like their paladin builds for example and like holy aura really doesn't do that much for you. Like it's it's replaceable. It's definitely replaceable. Yeah. But on the other hand, like, are there really five skills you want to spec into? It's so free. It's such a free yeah. step. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I mentioned before that before we started the podcast, I had in my mind something a, a, a different metric for how we might go about building this tier list here. Instead of just like this thing's strong or this thing's weak or this thing has lots of build variety and this other one has very low build variety. Like there's so many metrics that just don't ever get captured in this tier list. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking we could talk about like which one should get updated next. So we could put like the good ones that don't need updating in S tier and like the bad ones that are just kind of old and do need to be updated in D tier. And like we could yes. either do that intentionally or we could just like finish the whole thing and then put on our, our designer goggles and think like, hey, maybe maybe the ones in D tier are the real answer to that question. Yeah, or at most C tier. I agree with you. I agree with you. I can get behind that. All right. Should we get started or should we talk more? I think I'm good. I, I, you answered my question. I'm happy. Which one's which one's garbage? Uh, there's so much to say. I'm gonna start with the very first one. Um, and it's not necessarily D tier. I'm just putting it here. So this one is a marksman, Ooh, and I marksman. I haven't I haven't played much marksman in 1.1, but I've heard that there's a number of changes for marksman regarding like more damage multipliers that like used to be increased damage, but used like are currently more damage. I've heard people playing Reign of Arrows or Hail of Arrows um, having insane damage, which is like really, really big. Like Hail of Arrows was good in the past. It was, you know, it was good damage, and like very survivable and a good play style. But I've heard people having really big damage off Hail of Arrows. The rest of Marksman, I don't really have an opinion on. <laughs> and when you say big damage, are you talking big clear, great clear, or are you talking uh, single target as well? Single target damage. Cause like really? ha yeah, because Hail of Arrows, you just kind of like you you throw it like you group up some enemies, you do your combo, you drop one big Hail of Arrows, then you just like keep running, right? Right. Yeah. But like, I feel like I gotta see this. Like, you know, what kind of Jorah kill timings are we talking about here? I, I Hail of Arrows. <laughs> I don't know. Because like, I don't I don't want to play a marksman. <laughs> uh, but I I've heard that Hail of Arrows is like a great place to be for a marksman build. I was worried at the very beginning of 1.1 when I was reading the patch notes, I was worried that despite getting 14 different nerfs, that 
detonating arrow traps was still going to be the best marksman build. And I don't know of anyone who plays any marksman build except for the Hail of Arrows build. I just, I don't, I don't have any context for it. So I went to YouTube and I searched Hail of Arrows marksman, last epoch. Sure. And I filtered it from within the last one month. And I'm not getting very many hits, I have to say. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a secret build. It's a... Listen, a build doesn't need to be on YouTube for it to be a good build. Hear, These yeah, are like I people in Twitch chat telling me that they're having good experiences. No, I believe it's just I wanted to see it for myself and, and be able to gauge better, learn. You know, I wanted to learn. Oh, you know, I think you just need to play a marksman now. I want to, <laughs> but if we put it in D tier and they happen to rework it, then why don't I just wait until they rework it? <laughs> Uh, so marksman, I, I tentatively, I want to put marksman in D tier. Um, it, it did get some updates during the 1.1 patch. Some of the increased damage multipliers turned into more damage multipliers, which just mm -hmm. means you need to get increased somewhere else. Um, so like, it's not strictly an upgrade. It's like you're building these things differently, but I, I do feel as though for the most part, marksman is just old. It's it's limited because it doesn't have much crossover with like the other two classes um the best form of defense arrow guard's been nerfed there's a new quiver and i've i've heard mm. that it's a relevant defensive quiver and it's not strictly worse than arrow guard so thank goodness uh it's like the phase point it's like a boss drop from from one of the harbingers but like is that enough i don't know i just when it comes to excitement and like reason to play these things like yeah you can play multi shot it's fine you can play uh, multi shot. It's fine. I don't know. There's, <laughs> there's like two builds. Yeah, I agree. So my thoughts on it are: I think it's very lacking in damage. The class overall. Yeah. And to me, you know me, I'm a DPS junkie. If I don't have damage, I'm not gonna play the game. You know. <laughs> so, I, I I struggle to think of like even what the marksman builds are. Like I so, so right? first hit Cinder Strike just got buffed. It has a more damage multiplier. And it's technically workable, so that's good. Yeah, so, and, and that's like mediocre at best. Great. So the other thing to think about is, is I think we're missing a skill in the marksman's skill tree, right? Like Falconer has five skills, marksman has four, blade dancer has four. Oh, so by yeah. default, the class should require an upgrade, should be weaker than the rest because it's missing a skill. So right? so EHG has said in the past that that's not like a hard and fast rule. Like they don't need to have those things, but they said like. We have space for one more skill. So I think but that's then nice. Think about, think about Dark Quiver as well. That's like missing two skills. Totally, totally agree with you. <laughs> it's like, ah. So uh, it's funny that I just mentioned Phase Point, that, that Quiver that has like some D Dust Shroud and uh, Dark Quiver synergy built into it, like the brand new unique Quiver that's not garbage, apparently. I feel right. like that thing should just be deleted and then add like take all the text and just like copy paste it into dark quiver yeah like i want i want dark quiver not to feel so awkward like it's like i feel like any any like one or two change would be nice i agree i agree i would honestly completely rework dark quiver just replace it with brand new skill completely <laughs> rework marksman we're gonna leave marksman in d tier and we might come back to it it's tentative no it's not let's talk about one more uh, I'm just going to go in order as they're, as they're presented in this tier list here. So the next one, uh, is curiously one that I thought I was going to completely love, but it's been so flipping strong that I just haven't touched it. Cause I feel like when things are so overtuned and so strong, like it doesn't matter how you spec it, it just blows up everything. So this is Falconer. Have you played Falconer? No, no. Same reason as you. It, it just, seemed like it didn't matter what you did. You you just like one shot everything. Yeah. So we know in, in patch one point one we had that race to kill uh Abra, the brand new pinnacle boss. Uh and the first boss kill was a Falconer playing Bleed, which got nerfed. But it's still very good. And you still off screen and you still just have <laughs> tons of damage by building your dexterity stuff. Um I don't have for first hand playing Falconer, but I imagine like bleed stuff. Dive bomb got nerfed, but I I don't I can't imagine the dive bomb got nerfed sufficiently. I think it's it's still probably busted. 
Um, any kind of shadow dagger stuff that you can do with it, you can still do like uh, acid flask plus explosive trap on it, and like yep. Falcon throws potions for you. Like I just feel like anything that you do with Falconer, like how how could you make it bad? Yeah, I think explosive trap is still overtuned. Dive top top dive bomb still overtuned, just like you said. And just the class overall, I think the DPS side is way overtuned, but the survivability I would say is undertuned. I think it could use some love on survivability front. Really? You know, when I look at the Falconer Mastery, I almost feel like it's the most boring mastery in the game. Like like the mastery skill tree itself. Like everything Bastard. is like five percent increased damage, five percent increased mm. damage, ten percent or like ten plus ten health, plus ten health. Like there's nothing particularly spicy there. But it does have defense. It's like it has armor and dodge and endurance threshold and more dodge here. And like it, it, it seems like the mastery itself. Like if I were going to play a Falconer, I would click on every single thing that has the word like defense on it. And then I would just <laughs> hope that my damage is busted because it probably is. Oh, it certainly is. Yeah, it certainly is. Like... <laughs> it's... Oh. So at what... least it's not as bad as 1.0. If, 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 if we're thinking about this in terms of. Uh, does a mastery need to be reworked? Like we're pretty sure that marksman needs to be reworked. Does yep. is is there such a thing as like being too good and needing a rework? No. Huh. Like it's it's if we're if we're only doing power level, Falconer belongs in S tier, not a doubt in my mind. But like, hmm. you know, maybe there's but two separate tier lists here. Would you would you kind of redo the entire skill trees or would you just bump down some of the numbers? You I know think I would just bump down some of the numbers. Right. So that's uh, not as bad as Marksman. Marksman needs like a complete deletion of yeah. everything and like redo everything from scratch kind of thing for a lot of the skills at least. And like Falconer is most certainly fun because it's fun to have yeah. damage and tons of people play it and you wouldn't have that many people continuing to play Falconer in 1.0 and in 1.1 if it weren't fun to play. So, like, is it designed yeah. well? Yeah. Does it have giga damage? Yeah. Is it too much? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. I would certainly say S or A tier from my perspective. I'm going to I'm gonna sneak it into A tier and just leave it there for the time being. Um, I think all of these are done in order. Nope. They're not. Okay. So they're not all done in order, but we're going to, we're going to talk about the third Rogue Mastery real quick, which is Blade Dancer. Um, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen you play a Blade Dancer. What's your experience with it? I've played a little bit. I really enjoyed uh, shotgun shuriken builds in the past. That was the thing I played the most long, long, long time ago. Uh, but yeah, certainly I haven't played it in a while. It, you can clearly see it's certainly, together with Falconer, the fastest leveling mastery. So it's the most independent of items. You can just shoot through the campaign, shoot through leveling without, you know, barely any items. And their clear speed is phenomenal. Um, in terms of pushing corruption, do you know much about it? I, I haven't followed too much the corruption pushing scene, to be honest. So when I think about Blade Dancer, I think about Shadow Dagger Umbral Blades. Do you think about yeah. anything else? Yeah. Let me look at the skills one more time just to... Because I mean, Dancing it, 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 Strikes it, just got a big buff. <laughs> <laughs> Little Mirage item. There's oh like my god, 200. yes. Oh man, I haven't seen anyone do it yet, but like there's no way that it's bad. No, no, the Lethal Mirage thing looks awesome. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. It's too one-dimensional. It needs a little bit of diversity in there, that class. So the Shadow Dagger Umbral Blade stuff did get a nerf. Uh, speaking of 1.1... The spinning umbral blades on the ground now have like it's like forty percent less chance to apply ailments on hit, which include shadow daggers, uh, which means that it, it's it's this weird series of nerfs that have happened over time for shadow daggers, where instead of nerfing the damage, they nerf like the ability to apply them. Mm. The one like damage nerf came in one point oh, where like they nerf the effectiveness of added damage, but by and large, like the history of last epoch, they just like they keep nerfing. Um, around Shadow Daggers instead of like the one nerf that they actually did in 1.0. So I don't know. That's when when I think about Blade Dancer, I think about Shadow Dagger Umble Blades and maybe Explosive Trap plus Acid Flask as well. Maybe. 
Seems fine. Oh yeah, that has been performing well. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I remember I did a review of like arena builds in patch 1.0, and like, of course, the dust shroud stuff was insane because like you throw your explosive trap and you automatically cap all of your glancing blow chance and your dodge chance, which was like totally nuts, right? Just for using this one skill. So you could but do that. That was more Falconer OP kind of thing. Right, right. But like, I mean, all the top performing blade dancer builds are doing the same thing. Yep. Yep. Which is weird. Yeah. So I would honestly, I would like to see go ahead. No, no, sorry. Can you finish your thought? Yeah, I would I would like to see more of the other blade dancer skills getting time to shine. Like you look mm. at the skill you get when you're level 15, you you spec into blade dancer, you get dancing strikes, and then no one ever uses dancing strikes. And that's criminal to me. Like even even things like like detonating arrow, like you know, you get uh you become a marksman, you get detonating arrow, you can use detonating arrow and it's good. Or you get um erasing strike and it's good. And it's like it's, it's a playable build. But like <laughs> you get what is it? Uh dancing strikes. And it's like no one has ever played dancing strikes. Yep. I was gonna say my thoughts are the class. A lot of the skills are very polarized. You have shadow daggers, which is like S plus tier, and you have shift itself is a phenomenal skill, right? Shift is an S tier mobility skill oh, that gives sure. you crazy survivability. Uh, but other than that, a lot of the other skills are pretty weak, probably even C to D tier. I would love to see synchronized strike and shadow cascade being more viable, not as a source of utility to trigger something else. Or to proc something else, but like damage sources themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Same as dancing strike, you already covered it, right? So overall, just bump a lot of these other skills and bring them up and maybe push down a little bit on the shadow daggers. I would I would like if there were like sources of damage that weren't bleed and weren't shadow daggers. Because when I think yeah. about blade dancer, realistically, it's like it's like the things you can do with dancing strikes, for example. You can play bleed dancing strikes and you can play uh shadow dagger dancing strikes. When I look at um mm. like umbral blades, you can play bleed umbral blades, and I promise you it's very good. Or you can go shadow dagger umbral blades, and like everything is like bleed shadow dagger, bleed shadow dagger. And like, you know, in the past I've played a melee crit shadow cascade character with no shadow daggers. And you know what? It was good. It was it was like mm. completely fine. It was very tanky. It's even playable right now. It's like not good on on like uh on single target it's not you know it's not outstanding on single target dps and with like shades of robus being tankier and single target with like um the harbingers and aberroth being more relevant i wouldn't play it these days especially because it's the melee character and like there's no you know compensatory damage to help carry your single target especially with all the damage over time everywhere that bypasses all of your relevant rogue defenses because it skips your armor and your glancing blows and your dodge but you know, I, I'd like to see, like you said, sources of damage that were like this skill. Like, I want to play a Sync Strike damage build, or like a Shadow Cascade damage build, or a Lethal Mirage damage build. It's like, you know, what do you what do you do with Lethal Mirage, especially with like the BBC, the, the Black Blade of Chaos, um, right. with the new Unique Twinted Sword? <laughs> you can play Bleed, you can use double rings from the Arena of Champions and go um, Shadow Daggers with it. Uh, I, I hope that the crit version of BBC ends up being a competitive version as well, because I just, you know, you, you stated it well. I want them to deal damage themselves and not just be for combos. Totally agreed. Totally agreed. Where do we put it? Is it, is it A, B, C? In terms of power, it's fast. It's good. A? I'd probably put it at A. Yeah. A tier? Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't really agree. need a rework. And I, I feel like if I put it too, too low, like I'd, I feel like we're going to have like three or four things down here and a lot in like the S and A tier. We'll see. Mm. We'll see if that ends up being yeah. It's missing a skill though. I mean, there sure that the ESG has mentioned it might not need five skills, but it does have only four skills in well, the it's, master. It's missing skills in the in the base class as well. There's like one or two right. missing skills there too. Like it should be right. a little bit more than that. All right. Next up, I'm going to go in order. We have our first non-rogue mastery. And this one is uh, one that I think you have a lot of experience with, which is Beast Mastery. What oh, nice. have you done with Beast Mastery in the past? Okay, let me pull it up. I like to have my last epoch tools on the side here. Okay, so Beast Master. So which one's Beast Master? <laughs> this one, okay, this one is the one with the scorpion. 
Beastmaster has, has a companion mechanic. He has aspect of the links for like crazy crit chance, crit multi damage, leases health on crit. Uh, you can play like crit tornado proccing gathering storm. You can play the EQ dot aftershock, which is like the premier build of 1.0 for Beastmaster stuff. Yes. So EQ Beastmaster, I think I made that build originally. At least I don't think anybody else was running mm -hmm. aftershocks in the way that I did before I did. So that's my favorite. I love to see that they're buffing it. That was like, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, really? Buffing it? Yes. I'm going to thank PoE for that one. I was like, PoE are buffing melee, and last epoch are trying to catch up. Let's buff some melee skills. Hey, Here like, we go. Hey, Earthquake, like, I, I literally just played the EQ dot aftershock build, and then like I posted the video, and an hour before I posted the video is when they released that like here's a here's a patch note that's going to come in the future. We're buffing the build that you just played twice as much damage effectiveness. Like, what? See what? That's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So is that is that like is that the gold standard by which you measure Beastmaster? Or like, do you care about squirrels? Do you care about raptors? Do you care about like solo companion scorpion stuff, which I hear is really good? So I definitely tried Sabretooth. I actually tried a bunch of different things after I played EQ, and this was like eight or so months, no, maybe more, like nine or so months ago. So I tried Sabretooth, and the damage is pretty pretty good. It's really solid. Obviously, it's not as good as EQ dot, but it's extremely respectable and it looks amazing like it's hitting like 10 times per second with the little saber tooth so it's definitely fun i recommend trying it at least summon storm crawls is another skill that deals insane damage survivability is an issue on both sides though both storm crawls and saber tooth specking into survivability probably if you go low life to take advantage of the berserking or actually it's called something different now it's a uh, cornered beast uh, yeah now. there you go but I think the DPS side on Beastmaster is top tier. Even Squirrels is great on the DPS side. Even they don't Squirrels. Split. <laughs> Sorry? Even Squirrels, as if they were lacking in some way. All right. If the, even Bugfisk Squirrels is even what I Even Bugfisk, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, have you tried the Raptor? What do you think about the Raptor? I haven't <laughs> tested it. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know much about Raptors because I don't tend to play minion builds. So oh, when, when I think right. about Beastmaster, I think about like two things. Like I think about like self-damaging with like shark, attack speed, frenzy totem, aspect of the links, or being like a minion build, which is a lot of the same things, but like scaling, you know, scaling minion damage instead. And I, I think both of them are in a great spot. Uh, of mm -hmm. note for patch 1.1, we saw a change finally that people who play Last Epoch in the community have been asking for for a long time, which is the chance to gain Aspect of the Boar on melee hit has been moved above the halfway point. So, all, like, the real scaling for Boar on hit, which is like, you know, or sorry, the real scaling of Boar, which is enabled by getting it on melee hit, is only Beastmaster, which I think is an amazing change. It, like, helps Beastmaster really stand out as, you know, the only one of the three Primos Masteries who's able to get this kind of, like, extra defense. I love it. I think I think yeah. Beastmaster is just like maybe maybe not as a yeah somewhere somewhere around Blade Dancer or uh, yeah Blade Dancer as well. I think it's great. I would probably put in A tier as well. Yeah, like maybe maybe not as I think it could be a little bit a little bit more interesting. Um, I don't I don't, like. Do we really need like Scorpion and Wolf and Raptor and Sabretooth? Like, do we? Do we really need all four of these different things? Because like you're never using them at the same time, right? Yeah, it's true. Oh, sorry, and, and Stormcrow, even... right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Scorpion is great, by the way. Oh, I'm sure yeah. you've talked to Cookbook. C Cookbook, just like the you know the Lord and Savior of Scorpion players. He's been like only playing that build for a very long time. He's like a great source of knowledge for it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if we that... need so many different minions because like when you when yeah. you play like a stormcrow build you're just like stormcrow plus frenzy totem plus you know swipe plus warcry plus maelstrom or like when you play squirrels you're like squirrels plus all of that or raptor plus all of this like it's all like the same kind of thing do we really yeah, need I five agree. different options or could we could we like trim one of them and then just like make room for like a new support skill or a new damaging skill or something along those lines yep or make them a utility summon skill if that's even possible yeah. Oh, you know what? So so Frenzy Totem has support for that. And then like, I think Raptor has support for like having multiple stuff. 
And this is a question that new players ask all the time. Like, oh man, can I have all of these dogs That's and raptors and storm crows follow me at the same time? And the answer is no. Like, you can do it, but your build's going to be bad. Yep. So there's yep. a lot more support for, like, solo companion or for only one type of companion than there is for, like, this herd, um, like, army of, of little monsters following you around. And, like, if it's that popular, if people want it that much, maybe EHG should just add support for, you know, new players or, you know, people who want to live this fantasy having the option to do it. Yep. But overall, would you agree if I said, and this is my thoughts here, is that Beastmaster in a pretty good spot. The DPS side, you can choose many different skills to deliver DPS. You can, uh, it's pretty survivable. And honestly, my only gripe, and this is very minor, if you consider it in the grand scheme of things, is aspect of the shark. I feel like it's such a YOLO ability. If you want to go down that route, you have to either go like, 10 points for a tiny bit of utility or like 50 passive points right <laughs> fall into it. It, yeah, it's like could, it's too much they, of an investment they could they could definitely uh add more spice to the beast master skill tree by just trimming some of the real estate and taking yeah. it away from aspect of the shark totally agree yes. with you on that i'd love to see that but that's such a minor complaint right if you think about it the this mastery overall is in a pretty good spot. It's I would good. not worry about it too much, considering we have marks. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. All right, next up is uh, the second uh, of the Primalist Masteries. We're going to drag Druid up here. So uh, Druid, we do not get, you know, aspect of the boar on melee hit like we used to. Uh, what, what changed for Druid in patch 1.1? Basically nothing, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much nothing. There's the, the Serpent Venom stuff that ended up being <clears throat> bugged, unfortunately. But Druid, uh, I think I think the standout thing that's happened recently in the world of Druid is more and more people and more builds and it's becoming more common. And even myself, we're realizing that, you know, form swapping as a mana battery and building some cooldown recovery speed is a great way of enabling like Tornado spam and EQ mm -hmm. spam and avalanche spam if you're a shaman changing into spriggan form like the transformations are the big part of druid and they're really good if you you know build a bunch of mana and then just like transform transform of getting all that mana back swarm blade unique is new i don't is there a swarm blade unique right the one with the the swarmlings or what are they called the spear i think Twitch chat, why do you do this to me? Okay, so thanks, Twitch chat. Yeah, I guess there's a new unique item. It's a spear. So <laughs> there, there is a new unique item for Swarm Blade, I guess. It gives you locusts on melee hit or something. Yeah, uh, that spear has 200 flat damage. It has 7 flat crit as the implicit. And it has up to like 46 attack speed on it. That is not a minion weapon. That is a rive weapon. That is a tempest strike weapon. That is a melee thing to bonk somebody with. It's got so much damage on it. If you delete all the text on that weapon that says the word locust, you'll have a better understanding of what that item really does. <laughs> There's a new swarm blade weapon. Come on, Twitch chat. All right, so Druid. What, what do we think about Druid? When Druid was first updated, and Druid, Druid was like the like the first big update in Last Epoch in like patch 085 or something like that. Um, it was incredible. It was, it was so, so good. It's, you know, and then after that we had, you know, Rune Master update, and then we had uh, the release of the two new masteries, and then we have like all the stuff that's been happening now. Like, I feel like Druid's kind of old at this point, but like, yeah. I, I feel like it's aging well. Like, like B or A tier, I have like very, very few complaints about Druid. Yeah, my thoughts are, I haven't played it too much, so I'm going to take your stance more so than mine. But the most I was ever excited about Druid is when I saw that earthquake uh, on where bear, what is it, on proc, mm -hmm. you know, with that 200 mace. That was the most I ever got excited, but I never got to try it because they nerfed it. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see more interactions with the Druid transformations. And they already have a whole lot. So don't get me wrong, they're already doing a pretty good job with that. But if they added even more interactions between the various transformations and the existing skills, I think that'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I do have a complaint about Druid, and that is the 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 passive that you get for specking into Druid, like your, your class passive, is 70% mm -hmm. damage reduction when leaving a transformed state. And I talked about this in like the video that I did recently, but like that that's 70% damage reduction. It's either completely ignored because you're playing perma werebear, perma yeah, striggan, I mean, or perma thing. Or if you're not ignoring it, it's completely busted because 70% yeah. DR is insane. <laughs> and if something's completely feast or famine or like ignored or completely yeah. OP, maybe it shouldn't be there. Maybe there should be like a mastery passive for being a druid that has something else going on in it yeah that's a good point spriggan needs love compared to other transformations spriggan having access to like your um your like little bunny hop what's it called the evade mechanic honestly feels quite good i i love having that ability to just like hop around just a tiny bit more but, the other ones don't get the evade no i mean they they do but they also have movement skills oh okay <laughs> and spriggan doesn't <laughs> have movement skills there's a couple of memes with Spriggan. Like uh there's a there's a pair of boots called uh Roots of Vithrasil. Right. And do you know what they do? I remember that. I've seen them many, 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 many times. Yeah, what do they yeah. do? They they say you can't move in Spriggan form. Yeah. So there there's you see they're thematic because as a Spriggan, you're a tree. And trees <laughs> can't move. So it's just it's just the worst item I could possibly imagine. Wow! <laughs> it uh, it gives you like uh, some extra damage or something. Uh, we've actually talked about like form swapping into them and then having you know no movement speed, or you could you could also boot swap. We talked about boot swapping as well in the middle of a boss fight. Like you know avoid avoid the boss mechanic. Put on the boots. Have extra DPS. Take the boots off. Run around. If you really want like the biggest brain of micro, like a high APM build, it exists. I don't know if it's good, but it definitely exists. If they changed increased damage to more damage, I'd get behind that. I would totally mm. get behind that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, tree tree I larping. Like yeah, I love tree larping. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't have many uh, complaints about druid. It's like it's like a tiny bit old, um, but I think it holds up very well. I'm not not particularly concerned about it. Yeah, I think B tier is all right. It it has variety as well, which is nice. It it does uh, lend itself well to like a new player trying Druid. Like I've, I've said this a couple mm. times, but Druid has uh, minion builds, uh, like minion crit, minion ailment, totem stuff, like procs. It's, it can be like a melee build. It can be a human form build. You can be like a big mana like mana battery stuff. You can be a spell build, like you can be your own ailment build. Like you have lots of different archetypes that get covered in Druid. I wonder if that's a problem. Is that a bad thing that it covers so much? Right? I don't know. I don't think so. Nah, it's good. It's good. It is, it is good. Like there's a couple nodes in Druid that I find myself like never taking, for example. Like um basically the transform stuff at like the, the bottom right corner of the mastery tree. Which is like crit multi if you transformed recently, or if you like, if you like left a transform state recently. But I guess yeah. you know with cooldown recovery speed, you could just do the big mana stuff and use it as a mana battery, like we we're talking about. But the, like outside of, I think about masteries and I think about like a heat map of the nodes that I've taken and the okay. nodes that seem like auto includes and the nodes that I see other people taking. And like Druid has a pretty good spread. Like there's there's a couple things that I've like never taken, but it's got a pretty good spread. You know, it'll be even cooler. If ESG had the data of if you could just filter everything over a thousand corruption that is a druid and then do the heat map that you're talking about and then just have a bar that just moves the corruption down, let's see over 500, over 200. That would be a really cool heat map would, to see. I'm, I'm sure they have that information. I would love that information. Yeah. We're, we're going to grab one more mastery here. Uh, I, I, I like how much we're talking, but I am taking a look at how many masteries we have left. So let's uh, let's grab Shaman here. What have you done with Shaman? Shaman has Avalanche, which is a completely new skill as of patch 1.1. There is the Gathering Storm stuff that was added in patch 1.0. Synergies with Maelstrom, synergies with Avalanche, EQ, Tempest Strike, synergy with like different minions as well. Um, and then we have, let's see what else is new. 
There's like some minion frostbite stuff. They added some attack and cast speed. They added some thresholds into the one into the uh, the mastery tree in 1.1. What are what do you think about shaman these days? You know, it is the classic uh, thorn totem build that had been has been good forever. Mm -hmm. That one has always been like a tier build. Let's call it. And I've played that a while back. Otherwise, I've just followed it, and I probably want to try this patch. I like that they buffed Storm Totem. I do think the spells, especially Earthquake, for example, I think it's a little bit awkward. It starts as a media skill. Converting it to spell gives you barely hybrid, any... Hybrid benefit. damage? Right, yeah. It's just very awkward. Very awkward as a spell skill. As a melee skill, it's perfect, Earthquake. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't work well as a spell. I would oh, love as, to be able to run spell earthquake. As a spell, you can use like a catalyst for like plus six critical strike chance. You could mm -hmm. amp up the flat damage with tempest strike. I guess. Like there's there's some stuff you could do with with a uh, spell EQ. I don't mind it. But then, like you said, how do you get your mana back? The mana solutions are lacking on shaman. You're playing melee something to get mana back, right? Well, so you can tempest strike or swipe for like mana uh, mana recovery. Or you could That's swap. Me. You could swap into Spriggan form, <laughs> because Spriggan form is, is is still accessible as a shaman. It's a uh, <clears throat> you could you could do that too, which probably sounds you, like a good idea. You could you could, but we're there is no spell solution for mana regen. That's what I'm trying to say. I would love shaman to be able to play as a spellcaster without needing to resort to melee skills mm -hmm. and maybe that's not part of the plan for shaman for ESG but mm -hmm. that's what I would like to see is just, I th think it's missing because I imagined gathering storm to be a spell recovery solution for shaman spellcaster mm -hmm. it ended up being a melee skill right. that was a bit of a surprise for me I mean it, it's not a bad skill it has good mana recovery you sort of count that, two handed staff. You can you can generate like one mana per cast, maybe two mana per cast if you're using like the two handed staff, especially with the uh, the new staves that have like minus like five spell mana cost as the implicit, which is neat. Yeah. Um, I I think what they want you to do is like just build mana regeneration, especially because you have like mana regeneration per attunement now. But like you know, for a long time, people have been asking for like getting f like base mana regeneration, like flat mana regeneration as some kind of shaman payoff i'm still waiting for it i feel like it's such a good idea that it's gonna happen someday just I'd waiting patiently it. for my flat mana regeneration would be nice yeah i agree but I, otherwise shaman in terms of dps is solid now what do you think i like it i think i think there's a lot of cool stuff to do with shaman and like they don't all involve um avalanche but avalanche is like a completely new skill and it's dealing crazy damage and there's good synergies with other skills baked into it i like it i'm, I'm thinking like i kind of want to put it in a tier like above druid like it's got updated more recently it's got interesting stuff going on is it is it a tier is it is it better than druid here's a data point for you wasn't it the number one hardcore player to reach 100 a shaman avalanche shaman was it or was it or it was, was it, it was a, it was a wear bear, wasn't it? It was like a wear bear tornado spam stuff. I thought it was a shaman with avalanche. What there was, was it? there were two players care. on hardcore that were battling it out, and nobody else was even close. Okay, it was Roly on I think Paladin, <clears throat> and I think it was shaman, some Polish streamer perhaps or French streamer. I, I think it was a French streamer on shaman. Sure, but that in itself shows that shaman has, you know, great potential. Given that somebody with Obviously, limited avalanche experience. Mm -hmm. Given it's <laughs> a brand new and... skill, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it, it definitely is solid. I think A tier is sound for it. I'll, I'll put an A tier. I, I like Shaman a lot. I don't think it's done getting updated. I think it could use like a tiny bit of something else. Um, yeah. But like it, the the mastery skill tree for Shaman, I, I think it's more interesting than Druid. I think they could both use a little bit more, but I think Druid needs like a tiny bit more work. Um, I think it's good. I think as we as we introduce more things that scale off of plus maximum resistance, like or not sorry, not plus maximum, but like having overcapped resistances, things like Null Portent, which is that new unique body armor that just got introduced to the game, that thing rewards you for having massively over not massively but overcapped resistances, having like 115 all res. And Shaman offers you a really easy way 
to make use of 20% DR for all um, for all elements because you just have a totem active and you get all of your resistance. Like that's pretty good. Yep. What do you think about storm stacks, by the way? Storm Does it need stacks. a buff? Uh, I, I love that Avalanche is a way of generating storm stacks for Gathering Storm without directly casting Gathering Storm. And I also like that it's above the halfway point because it, it means that generating storm stacks without using Gathering Storm is kind of like a Shaman only thing. And I mm. think if they ever do release an additional skill for Shaman, because there's space for it, right? For like one more Shaman skill. If they did that, I would like to see another thing that generates storm stacks without having to use Gathering Storm. I like it. I agree. Cool. All right. I want that storm stacks to be viable. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's do, uh, let's see, one, one, two, three. Yeah, let's, let's start doing some Sentinel stuff. Most of these are in order. Let's grab another thing that, you know, the highlight of patch 1.1 was Forge Guard, baby. Forge Guard and Shaman, they're finally good. They both got updated. Forge Guard, the big standout stuff that stands out to me for patch 1.1 is that Shield Bash is a, is a playable skill. It scales off block effect. It scales off block chance. It deals lots of damage. It gets like flat damage per strength. And it's like, it's, it's bonking people and it's really tanky. Shield Bash seems like an excellent skill for those of you who want to, you know, dual wield shields, quote unquote, and just bonk people. The other standout builds for Forge Guard that come to mind for me for 1.1 is Forge Weapons which is really strong and really bugged. And then <laughs> the other one would be Smelter's Wrath, which, in, which can two-shot Averroth, which is insane, and is also insanely bugged. So, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what Forge Guard is doing these days. What are your thoughts on Forge Guard, especially at the 1.1 stuff? Yeah, so it, excluding the Smelter's Wrath damage bugs, I think it definitely needs some damage love. I think the damage side is a bit still weak. Um, a lot of the bonuses are just super hard capped. Like if you look at shield throw, uh, you, you know, you can get more damage multipliers if you stack block, if you stack block effectiveness, but it's very much capped. You can't get it to deal as much damage as I'd like it to be, mm -hmm. right? So overall, I think it's a pretty tanky class. Very it, it does have damage. lots of damage over time mitigation. Like if you yeah. care about dot, like this is the class to be. That that's a great part of the rework. Yeah. So I would love to see them bump up the numbers a little bit, which is an easy fix, by the way, right? You can just change some of these damage effectiveness values a little bit higher, and I think it would make the class feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. I I look at the skills when I think about Forge Guard. I think about like Smelter's Wrath, like. Uh, mechanically, it's I, I really don't think Smelter's Wrath is that far away from being a skill that lots of people would enjoy. Just like make it charge up a little bit faster, make it deal a little bit more damage, make it have bigger AoE or something. Like, I don't something it's gonna get a tiny bit more quality of life or like a tiny bit more damage for Smelter's Wrath. And I think you'd have a slew of people saying, like, Hey, I'm glad that this archetype or this fantasy is something that I can enjoy. Speaking of fantasy, like I think Forge Guard's a total whiff <laughs> when it comes to fantasy. <laughs> if, I, I think like if I were going to have like my my D and D setting, or I was gonna have like the knight, the guy with a shield and with a sword, and he's gonna have three subclasses that he can spec into. You could have the holy guy, you could have the corrupt guy, or you could have the and I don't know what I would have chosen to be the third class. But the Forge guy who makes his own weapons, like, I could see it. You make your own weapons, sure. Your gear is better than the enemy's gear, or, like, better than everyone else's gear, because you're... It kind of reminds me... I don't know if you ever played League of Legends, but it reminds me of, like, Ornn. You know, like, Ornn Orn in League of Legends gets to have upgraded, unique items or something. And... Uh, Dota for life, baby. <laughs> but, like, something something like that. Like, my, my idea for Forge Guard is, like, let, like... Turn manifest armor into something that I care about. Like, I I think I think the ring, I, I, this is totally a tangent, but the ring, the forged weapon ring, the one that's bugged right now, like make that ring, turn manifest armor skill tree into a forged weapon skill tree. 
like ta-da all of a sudden forge weapons they scale with an actual skill tree like that'd be so cool or like put a node in in manifest armor that lets me put it on so that i get increased effect of my own gear like a mech suit yeah like there's all these ideas that kind of capture what forge guard could be from like a fantasy standpoint but like i he, what does forge guard do in last epoch he's got strength and he's got armor like yeah, but where's the fun part, man? <laughs> yeah, and he was supposed to be the minion guy for the entire Sentinel part, uh, skill or mm. subset of yeah, skills. Yeah, he sure is. Classes. And then the saddest part was if you're running Manifest Armor, the optimal way to play it was Paladin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for so, the like, you can, time, you can so. still do that right now, like being like an ailment scaling. Like, if you want flat damage scaling, like, I think, you know, Forge or uh, Forge Guard is the place to be. But, you know, mm -hmm. if you want ailment stuff, an ailment's pretty good, and Paladin lends itself very well. Eh. Yeah. Why you won't you let me be a tree? Gundam? That's a great question. Sorry? I, Twitch chat says, why won't you let me be a Gundam? It's a great <laughs> question. What do you think of the passive tree? They reworked it a bit. Is it good enough? Yeah. I get the sense that it might need a little bit more love. It's it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, it, so it currently scales off of strength, dexterity, attunement, is there any vitality scaling? I don't think there's any vitality scaling. But it's got three different attributes that it scales off of, mm -hmm. which kind of seems like it's 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 still a bit um like a bit too uh too broad, like not narrow enough. Um lacking in an identity. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't I think it's the skills. I I think the skills are the part that that fall flat for Forge Guard so much. Like I look at Forge Strike and Smelter's Wrath and manifest armor and it's like i don't i there's, there's there's things that you can technically do with them but it's like nothing stands out to me like nothing, nothing captures my imagination maybe that's a personal problem manifest armor used to be one of the best ways to deal single target dps but it just lacked in survivability and lacked in clear utility because the aoe was so tiny so nowadays so, doesn't even do that anymore well it, it still has crazy single target damage um manifest armor it actually got it actually manifest armor got a nice piece of quality of life in patch 1.1 and i know this because i talked to all three of the people who play manifest armor uh in the patch notes there's a thing that said like the the sh like the little shield rush thing that he does mm -hmm. to, like as, as movement um has better damage effectiveness and like a much better cooldown than it used to so like your clear speed playing a manifest armor build should be much much better than it used to be of course, that still means you're playing a minion build, which means my own interest in it is pretty low. But like, you know, I, I, I think that's a good place to be. I don't want to put it in A tier. I don't want to put it in B tier. I kind of want to put it in like C tier. Yeah, honestly, for me, it's C or D still. C or D? Is it does, yeah. it, does it need as much love as Marksman? Probably not. Probably not. We'll see. As as and as we, we as have... we do the next seven, we'll uh we'll yeah, I guess eight yeah, yeah. next eight we'll reevaluate. And now um, we have something in C, so that's good. <laughs> it was lacking before. Yeah, and now yeah, Forge Guard. Yeah. Now Forge Guard can be the one that's lacking. Let's take a look at the next uh the next Sentinel one, which is Paladin. Paladin in patch one point one got some changes to healing hands because the best Paladin build was healing hands, the best Void Knight builds was healing hands, and the best Forge Guard builds in patch one point oh was healing hands. So when Healing Hands got, like, it got, first of all, the ward change happened in 1.1, and Healing Hands specifically got tremendous nerfs in terms of ward. Um, but Healing Hands, I think, is still a great skill um, to add in, to, like, the whole slew of Sentinel skills. So I don't I don't mind Healing Hands spot right now. But what else is going on in Paladin these days? It has uh, the one-handed sword, Polaris, which allows you to proc smite a melee hit. That's a cool new thing that you could do in patch 1.1. Um, people are uh, experimenting with different versions of healing hands, playing like electrify, uh, electrify smite or electrify melee, electrify melee dual wield, trying out different combinations of things to make healing hands the best as it, as it can be. Has anything else happened with uh, with Paladin? I, don't think, I, think, I think Polaris is the big one. What do you think about Judgment Pious Offering? That used to be a really cool way to run. Oh, yeah. Um, so so the damage from... The more damage multiplier based on mana got not halved, but triplaved. 
What's the what's the word? What what's the opposite of tripled? I don't know that word. Like, is there a word? I, there should be. It got cut in thirds, maybe. There should be a word for that. It, it, it's a third of the value now. Yeah. So a Thirded. lot less damage. Uh, th sure, it got thirded. You got it, Twitch chat. Um, Thanks, chat. So the one punch man got strictly nerfed with no compensation. The spell damage version of Judgment did get a whole bunch of extra more multipliers to make up for that nerf. So it seems like EHG wants that to be a thing, whereas maybe they just didn't want one punch man to one punch, you know, the final boss. <laughs> Have I played it? Nope. <laughs> when I play Paladin, I'm not, I don't know. I don't feel like I've ever played Judgment. I played Judgment once when it was like gigabugged. Um, but yeah, I haven't, haven't really done anything with Judgment. That's something to note, though. Mm. You're playing Paladin for all of the buffs that it provides, whether mm. it's Sigils of Hope, whether it's Oli Aura, whether it's Healing Hands. Mm. That's just a lot of buffs. Oh, or obviously, like, or the spell crit that's in the skill well. tree, or the bleed, yeah. uh, the bleed effect, the bleed penetration, physical penetration with bleed, it's in the skill tree, or like having just a bunch of life in the skill tree, or you know, just having access yeah. to like percent increased fire and percent increased physical damage from your mastery passive, like that's good too. But like yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, judgment's good. I know people like judgment, but I, I kind of like it. But I'd love to see an extra skill added to Paladin. It has four skills. Three of them are kind of more utility skills. Do wait. One of them is do judgment. You know? Do I know? Do I know? Do you know? The next skill getting added into the last epoch will be a Paladin skill. What? Oh, we so, we've been, so we, it's confirmed, dude. The next skill is exactly what you want. Hopefully what? it's good. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. right. They're adding Go in a new me. paladin skill. No clue what it is, by the way. It's got to be a damage skill. It's, surely it's not going to be a fourth utility skill, right? Oh, it's going to be uh, rebuke, but moving. <laughs> it's going to be another support skill. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I think about like rebuke, I, I guess rebuke is like, you know, classic not, or mastery agnostic. But I feel like when you tell EHG, like, like Sentinel is squishy. They say, yeah, but what about rebuke? It's like, you're right. But you're also mm -hmm. like, oh, what about having fun? Like, what about not yeah, using no rebuke? Ah. When, I, when you look at the arena, have you looked at the arena ladder? for? Uh, I, I will at some point. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my ladder review in like another week or two. But let's say the 1.0 arena ladder. Like, sure. it's, it's all rebuke, cheesing stuff, you know? It's so boring. I can't even. Mm -hmm. I can't or or 200,000 ward healing hands builds from 1.0. True, true, true. Mm. I should have gone with 0 0.9. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I actually I actually think we're not that far away from making fun of Paladin. Like right now, we make fun of Marksman. In the past, we made fun of Forge Guard and Shaman. I think we're like six months or maybe a year away from making fun of Paladin. Like Paladin, the mastery tree has a lot of nodes that you would never, ever take. You know, and like Holy Aura, it's fine. It's kind of an auto include. It doesn't really do anything. The coolest part of a Holy Aura, honestly, is the proc that you get uh, that you get for it. My Paladin's the squishiest character that I've ever had. Yeah, like I wish I had defense, right? I I think we're not that far away from Paladin being like the next thing that we just make fun of. Yeah, no, fair enough. But Paladin also has some of the coolest visual skills in terms of hammer throw and all the smite. Throw. Hammer that is throw. Hammer oh, throw. rewarding. <laughs> yeah. I, I would you know put what? it in like B tier just for that. Just just bump if, it up. If just you, for... if you if yo, yeah, I'm fine with that. If you told me to play Paladin right now, I'd probably just play Hammer Throw. Yes. Like maybe maybe bleed, maybe crit, maybe smite, maybe something else. But yeah, I just it's yeah. cool. It's just cool. The damage sucks a little bit, but it's super cool. Mm hmm Done. So. Like that's no notes. <laughs> just put it in E tier. <laughs> you know what? Actually, putting it next to Druid, that feels about right, doesn't it? I think I think next to Druid is a, is a good spot for that. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to our next one here. We have Void Knight, which obviously belongs in S tier because Void Knight is my favorite mastery to die on because I have no defenses. So Void Knight has uh, a couple changes that happened in 1.1. Notably, instead of giving 75% increased melee void damage 
um, immediately when you spec into your mastery, now you have more melee void damage per three vitality. So instead of just giving you damage, it gives you a way to build more damage off vitality, which is neat. I like that change. We have some extra flat health coming in per vitality. And I think that's about it. No, nothing much else has changed with Void Knight except for itemization. We have new uh, new weapons and new technology. People have been like continuing to work on a racing strike, making it better and better and better with like the mana stuff. World Splitter is awesome, has a lot of mana and crit built into it. Um, yeah, I think I think like Void Knight awesome, cool, flavorful. I think the mastery tree kind of sucks. <laughs> I think the mastery tree is like pretty underwhelming for all the nodes that it has. Like you always have enough points to spend, but like it's not very interesting. I think it needs You're thresholds. always taking the same. Say what? Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say you're always taking the same set oh, of nodes. Yeah. Your, your, heat, your, your heat map is like bright red. It's like you only take these nodes and very little diversity when it comes yeah. to like what you're specking into on Void Knight. Um, again, I think I think it's kind of similar with Paladin. Like we're I, we're really not that far from being at a point of Last Epoch history where we start making fun of Void Knight as well. Like it's good. It has cool stuff going on, but like it's starting to show its age. Like it's not Rune Master. Yeah. It's not Falconer. It's not Warlock. It's not the reworked Shaman. Like these things, they have a modern touch from EHG, and the things like. Paladin and Void Knight, they're not quite there. Yeah. And I think that another big reason all of Sentinel has been falling behind every other class is the ward meta. They can't really utilize ward except for healing hands, obviously, which mm -hmm. was just overturned. But outside of healing hands, all of these classes, and especially more so Void Knight, is heavily HP based. And as long as ward meta is king, these HP based classes are going to be weak and they're not going to be able to keep up and you know we're going to end up making fun of them if something doesn't get done about the ward meta obviously they moved in the right direction with regards to the ward meta i still think probably ward is a little bit stronger than hp but hp is catching up uh so especially void knight being the hp mm -hmm. king with having plus two per vit and having the incentive to stack as much of it as possible but still I still think they need a little bit of love, and I totally agree. Their B and C tier, all of the Sentinel. I think batteries. I think I think Void Knight's like like all of them are kind of kind of a defensive thing. Like Forge Guard obviously has like good defenses, but like nothing else. Paladin and Void Knight, you just don't have any <laughs> defensive options at all. <laughs> so I've I've been telling people like in patch one point one, especially because like you no longer you like you have you have relevant bosses, you have Harbingers, you have Aberroth, like you want to not get one shot randomly. Um, you need to have at least 4,000 HP. Which realistically means you should have 5,000 HP. You should just have that much because you don't have any other layer of defense. Um, but like at, at least 4,000 HP is like a good starting point. Then like, you'll get to 5,000. And then and then you put on your double red rings and then you have mm -hmm. all of your, you know, your, your or Oracle amulet and your uh, you know, armor applies to damage over time, gloves, with a sealed tier seven ethics as well. Like you need all of these things just to feel like you have half of a flame ward, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Here's something funny that I put together when I was doing my guide about making builds. If you look at defenses and you try to put together all of the options that Sentinel has for percent damage reduction from skills that are specific to Sentinel only and none other class can mm -hmm. do it. Forget items, right? Cause items everybody can access. Sentinel has fewer damage reduction options than Mage. Especially when we had Raywind's Frost Guard for Rune Master. The greatest, the tankiest class in the game was your Spellcaster, your Rune Master. Yeah. And your tanky boys with their shields had zero damage reduction anywhere in their skill trees, in their passives, in everything. Like, it made no sense. And it still is the case today. They need some damage, hard damage reduction. Forget just HP stacking. HP stacking doesn't get you anywhere it's not enough you just need some 20 30 you know raywind frost guard level 30 percent dr let's go <laughs> come on just get put it on sigils of hope and they'll take it again yes. um i i had something that i wanted to say but really it's like just no defenses leech is good leech is great but like you just need something that allows you not to get one shot 
All right, uh, let's let's grab. Let's see, one, two, three. That's all of our sentinels, right? So we're gonna move on to someone else. GG. We're we're moving on to like the two good ones. Not okay, oh, maybe yeah. not the two good ones, but we're gonna talk about Rune Master next. And so Rune Master got its big release in like oh nine two or something was Rune Master when it first came out. Um, it was obviously super strong. It's been nerfed a little bit because of the war changes. Um, and then Rowan's Frost Guard, of course, for all the people like myself who used to use that as your invocation, it no longer gives you DR, but now it gives you like 100 ward per second if that's going to be the runic that you end up using. Um, other stuff that changed in patch 1.1, it got a lot of nerfs and it got a lot of caps for how much, um, how much ward you can generate off of things like ward gain on crit, ward gain on skill use, ward gained on, uh, like, what do you call it? Frost Claw, because it loses the area tag if you take mm. the thing that makes it hit five times. Um, a lot of things like that. I do think Rune Master is still, like, really cool in terms of design, but one of my, you know, complaints about Rune Master over time has just been, like, you know, you have 40 runic invocations, and they all mm -hmm. look cool, but there's, like, three that aren't garbage yeah. and they said they did say at one point that they were going to give damage numbers to a lot of those runic invocations to incentivize people to like actually play them and like i i know myself i provided specific feedback based on like here's the good ones and then here's like a bunch of b and c tier ones that could use a little bit of damage to incentivize someone to actually do it and like i know other people provided, provided that feedback as well they could double or triple the numbers on some of those runic invocations and they wouldn't upset game balance you'd make a lot of people excited to play the game and to experiment you would not upset game balance at all like uh, yep. i think i think that's kind of criminal i agree i agree the way i think about it is clearly as a dota junkie as soon as you see this class it was based off of the invoker in dota and if you look at Invoker gameplay in Dota, the best players in the world, they're just like constantly switching invocations and spamming like five different skills in a matter of five seconds if you're that good. And then they click their refresher orb and they cast the same five skills again. It's just ridiculous pianist, like top tier pianist skill level that I could never get to. But that's what I want for Rune Master is if you hire like the best pianist in the world, they're just jamming buttons. And next thing you know, there's 15 skills just exploding everything in front of you. I want that for a Rune Master, something that somebody that's like, you know, 20 years younger than me and 10 times better than me can actually make it look like the best class that, in the game. That sounds so cool. Does that fit in an action RPG? I, I'd love if it did. I'd love it if it did. You, you, yeah, you want it that much that you wish it did. All right, I hear you. Um, Especially so the, the design itself. They, they created the flexibility for that. The flexibility is there okay. in how you can specify which three runes and the order of them. I can't keep track of the order of them in my brain, but I'm sure that somebody could. And I'm sure that if the damage was sufficient, if there was some incentive, if you do five different invocations in a row, you get like 500% more damage multiplier or something like that. Mm -hmm. If they added stuff like that, it could incentivize people that you know can actually keep track of these things to actually take advantage of it right yeah like you 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 have you know a skill expression with a payoff of the big more damage multiplier instead of just like here's a skill here's a skill it's like no give me give me a more damage if i'm casting different ones or something there is a little bit of a payoff for that but then you yep. also run into just like the issue of having two separate uh invocations that are worth casting <laughs> <laughs> uh, because some of them like plasma or you know are just so much stronger than the other ones yep um one thing that i want to highlight for rune master in patch 1.1 is i've seen some brainstorming on other twitch channels talking about cerulean rune stones which is like this mana endurance kind of thing and like Rune Master got a bunch of nerfs, and the class we're going to talk about next is Sork, which got a lot of buffs. What if Sork and Rune Master differentiate in like which one's going to end up doing like damage taken from mana before health? So in the past, in mm -hmm. 1.0, we had you know Rune Master's Giga OP, and nobody played Sork, and you start to think, okay, what what could be the difference between Rune Master and Sork? You know, Rune Master could be the ward one, Sork could be the mana one, and like yep. Sork is the mana one. 
all of a sudden in patch 1.1, but it's like mana and then mana spend gain is ward. So what if Rune Master became like the damage taken from mana for health or like the health regeneration thing with Sanguine Rune Stones? Like those two nodes that are in the top half of the Rune Master skill tree are really interesting nodes and they're very distinct from what Sork builds look like right now. And I like to have differences like thematic differences between like what your offenses tend to look like as one class as opposed to a different class like you know beastmaster gets asked with the boron melee hit and you're always in human form but druid you don't get beastmaster you don't get uh as with the boron melee hit but you get access to like mm. form swapping and like dr based on that so you have like different kinds of defenses you build your characters in different ways like cooldowns are more important than one of those and i think that rune master could be sweet if we leaned into something like that instead that's a really good take. Honestly, I'd love to see what you're preaching for here. Um, yeah, I love completely it. agree. If we're putting Rune Master, Master on a tier list, okay, so let's let's pretend the tier list is strictly based off power level. Mm -hmm. Where does Rune Master belong? A or S? Probably leading to A personally. A tier? I think I think A tier as well. If we were yeah. talking about this tier list in terms of like design or like which one should be reworked soon, where would you put this? My biggest gripe with Rune Master is fundamental criterion is way too much of the power level of the class. Sure like is. One item, one item loads most of the power. I think that needs to change. I think it's something they were experimenting with, and I don't personally love it. But other than that, you, so you ask in terms of power level, definitely I think A tier. A tier is solid. So right. A, 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 tier, A tier for both criteria. Love it. Yeah. All right, let's grab another uh, mage build here. I'm going to grab Sork because we just talked about Sork. So in 1.1, 1 .1, um, let's see, how many things changed in 1.1? 1 .1? Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything changed in 1.1. 1 .1. Sork is basically an entirely new mastery. We have Meteor, and it's not garbage. We have Static Orb, big mana builds. We have people using mana spent gain as ward. We have people with 1,000, 2,000, 2,500 mana. I know you've been doing a lot of work with Sork as well. I've seen totally insane Sork builds. What is your experience? Because you have like firsthand with what this class looks like in 1.1. Well, one of the coolest changes is the passive bonus, right? And that's what triggered some of the bonuses to the other skills that you mentioned, is that spells now deal 1% more damage per two mana cost. Rather than increased damage, they do more damage, which is essentially a buff to every single skill that's like... 40 plus mana, except for Static Orb. Because 500 mana cost Static Orb, 500% increased damage <laughs> is similar to 50% more damage, you know? So it, it, it's kind of a wash. It's not a big deal. Either way, it's probably dealing close to the same damage Static Orb. But what it is also is, is it's kind of a nerf to the zero mana cost or to the low mana cost sure, skill okay. like Lightning Blast. So I'm a little bit sad to see Lightning Blast go. Because uh, it's just not viable compared to all the other 40 well, plus maybe, mana Maybe skill. Lightning Blast is just like a Rune Master skill now. Is it? Is it viable for Rune Master? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Like, you could know, like Rune Master, Intelligence, Spark Charges, Lightning Blast, um, Mad right. Alchemist Ladle. Like, you can do those kinds of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I, other than that, I think the Sorg class as a whole right now heavily revolves around this 40 mana cost threshold i think they've gone to yolo on that one i don't know if it what, feels what about great. like the 300 mana versus 1000 mana thresholds was that was that like a good change like do you like having double thresholds like encouraging you to keep investing i think it's okay i'm not as grumpy about that one i think basically all of my builds are over a thousand mana so i don't even feel it but i hear what you're saying if you're between 300 and 1,000, you feel like you're you're missing out. The FOMO is real. No, oh, I I like I like the multi-tiered threshold stuff instead of just like here's one tier for this. Just like give me more tiers. It's very similar to like how me and a lot of people feel about uh, corruption. So right now mm -hmm. there's like this 200 corruption, which is where you get Omnis, and then there's 500 corruption where you cap out on gold, and then there's like this like nebulous. Like kind of like eight hundred or a thousand, like a thousand is really good for favor because like there's diminishing returns after that. But like, I, just give me tears, you know, just give me yeah. something hard and fast. Like give me a big dramatic change that happens at five hundred, so I feel it. And like, yeah, you know what? Double thresholds for like three hundred and thousand mana. 
Uh, I think it's the I think it's the first thing we've seen like that on a mastery, but I like yeah. it. I want to see more of it. You're right. Cool. I support that. I agree. Yeah, makes me want to min max my gear. Makes me want to use, you know, double attack speed gloves or double mana gloves or double attunement gloves and really push my build to the max and like lean into the LP system. So I like it. I like it. Um, Sork used to be I, when I put out a. Uh, a list of builds for brand new players to try out in patch 1.0 uh kind of tongue-in-cheek but also seriously i didn't include a sork build because like <laughs> there was just no reason to play sork at all like listen you can do it yeah. but you're just worse in every way and you're not gaining anything out of it and yeah. what a 180 just like sork is just totally giga chad super strong lots of cool things to do with it and it's, you know, it, it's finally Judd, the CEO, living up to his vision of his favorite skill, Meteor, being more than just a meme. So I think there might have been some favoritism that went into this, one, <laughs> but he finally achieved it. <laughs> so what would you do about Sork, given that we're putting it at S tier? And I, I agree it's S tier. How would you tinker with it? How would I tinker with it? So I don't, I don't have that first hand experience. I don't know if like the damage is the problem. There's like survivability is the problem. Um... There's probably too many payoffs for for getting a big mana cost. I I don't I don't feel like I'm the right person to ask about like what I would do about Sork. It it certainly deals a fuck ton of damage. <laughs> um and having having like these big mana cost skills be usable based off of mana refund mechanics or like mana skip mechanics off of things like you know teleport or lightning blast refunding parts of the mana cost of of static orb like those are really cool in the past. But now they're just like, they're still really cool, but the damage that they're enabling is so much bigger. So I don't know. I don't know what I would, I would change about it. How, so you you played it. Well, what's your experience like? Is, is the spark charge stuff good? Do you do you want this much damage? Like, Do you feel like you've invested a lot to get to this point? Or do you feel like your damage has been free? Right. So I have probably a few different points. I'm going to hate myself for saying one of them. Uh -oh. But... I'll, I'll leave that one for last. But the first one is, I'd say, Lost Knowledge. It, a lot of the defenses for Sork revolve around Lost Knowledge. And that's like the, the thing where you gain five... Yeah, five ward per 15 current mana. Mm -hmm. And when you're running 2,000 ward... Sorry, 2,000 mana, you get ridiculous amounts of ward per second. It's just insane. And it the requirement there is a threshold of 40 mana cost for the skill, and it has to be a direct cast. So what that does is, again, it just dumps on Lightning Blast. You can never use Lightning Blast with this. <laughs> sure, okay. <laughs> if there was something like, but for skills that are under 40 mana, you get something else, right? If you get some other bonus, like 500 ward per hit, I don't know. <laughs> I, I love I love your bias toward making Lightning Blast as good as possible. It's just like, what about Lightning Blast? <laughs> it's so cool. It's one it of my is, favorite It is cool. I love cool Lightning Blast. It, it reminds me of like, like Ark from Path of Exile. It's just like, everybody loves yes. Ark. Everybody loves Lightning Blast. Just let me chain around and pew, pew, pew. Like, I love that. Yes, so Lost Knowledge. And if you imagine, like, let's say we said nerf Lost Knowledge. If you nerf Lost Knowledge, I feel like there will be a bit of a gap on survivability on Sork. But I think I would like to see them just invest in other survivability options for Sork. And Lost Knowledge, yeah, nerf it a bit. It's just too, way, way, way too strong. And same thing with Arcane Current, the 40 mana cost where you get Spark Charges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably need the nerf. That's really good. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what they were thinking with that note. Like, I love, yeah. I love Spark Charges, but, like, I don't want to play it because it's completely insane. And I feel yeah. the same way about Sork that I do with Falconer. Just, like... You just you you build you build uh, a sork. You put a thousand mana on it, and you do whatever you want, and you're gonna have a crazy strong build. Yeah. So spark charges in general, I feel like. No, sorry, frost claw. Frost claw is something that I think needs to be nerfed a bit. If you think about since it's released in point nine, which is about a year ago, mm -hmm. it has been a top tier option for everything mage. It used to be rune masters, one of the top options in terms of frostbite or whatever it is, it was always run as a as the top tier skill choices. And then 1.0, same thing, Frostclaw was one of the top skill choices. Not necessarily top because we had like runic invocation and some crazy runic invocations there, but it was still one of the top choices. And today again, Frostclaw is still, even after they changed it up a bit, it's still one of the top choices. So to 
time to let other skills shine. I like skills being powerful. I like skills coming out of nowhere and just being the top dog on the on the marketplace. But Twitch, let, Twitch let, just let said something try. interesting. Twitch that said like Falk, you know, equals st uh, stack dexterity, and then yeah. Sork is like st stack mana, and like those those do kind of sound alike, don't they? Like Falconer build dexterity, do whatever you want. It's OP. Sork build mana, do whatever you want. It's OP. Is that? Is that something you like? Do you want more of that? Is that true or is that just a joke? I is like it, is it. Is it really as easy for being a Sork as like just build a thousand mana and your your, your builds giga strong? I, I don't think a thousand is enough, honestly. I think mm. it gets crazy good around 1500 to 2000. That's okay. so that's some of the thresholds that I think contribute greatly. But yes, stacking mana. I like builds where stacking some of the mana, for example, it's very difficult to get to the crazy high points and it takes a very long period of farming to get there. And I think that's good game design. You want certain builds that are, you know, they peak one weekend, but you also want builds that require four weeks of farming for them mm -hmm. to truly peak and truly reach their absolute end game potential. So I think that's good game design. I think mana stacking is probably some of the latter option where you need to farm a little bit longer. It's probably a bit overtuned though, where even with 1500 to 2000 mana, you're still getting crazy returns. Mm -hmm. Radicorb is one of the bigger culprits there. It's just one of the best single target DPS options in the entire game. If you can kill the, the end game boss in under 10 seconds without bugs, <laughs> without bugs. Yeah. So, and I hate myself for saying that. Static Corp is one of my favorite skills, but it's a little bit overtuned. Got it. I, All right. Yeah. I, what do you think? I, I completely agree with you. Like having the ability just like to cast these spells and then have a you know, a, a functioning play style after you've cast it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of insane, isn't it? Like you have the mana refund mechanic built into uh, Mage right now. How strong has that been for you? There's nodes in, sorry, not in Mage, but in Sork. There's nodes in Sork that say like, you know, percentage of the uh, mana cost of your spell, skill gets refunded to you. Has that been like game changingly relevant for like your static core builds? Yeah, yeah. And some people have actually been using that. Like Frozen has been using that as a really cool manner recovery mechanic, actually. You know, he gets, I think, um, Meteor to cost like 220 mana. Then he casts Mana Tunnel. And then he returns 220 plus 20 percent mana back. So it, you get like 250 mana back every five or, or so seconds. Is that nifty, right? It it, it counts as mana. Or it, the mana cost is still there, even though you skipped it. So like you still get the refund based on it. And it's a very similar thing to what you used to do, and I guess what you could still do with Static Orb plus Lightning Blast, because like yeah. the mana cost is still really big, and your Lightning Blast still refunds it, even though you didn't pay it. And like those kind yeah. of cheats are just like so so impactful. Yeah. So if I was running lightning blast right now, I would be running static orb at like six hundred mana cost. And if I see this was my dream, if I could get static orb, sorry, lightning blast to be forty mana cost, I would run <laughs> lightning blast static orb. I would cast lightning, but sorry, I would cast static orb, get all my mana back because of mana tunnel, and then you know you you would be able to sustain a forty mana cost lightning blast. I. For, for from now on you're gonna be like 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 the curse if only lightning blast costs 40 mana like that's that's like the middle name right there it's the it's the epithet it's pretty good mm -hmm. if only i could make it like imagine being like a paladin being like if only my smite cost 40. <laughs> i know right. i i want to pull up the game i want to pull up one more right now this is uh this is the last of the mage stuff and it did get a couple changes in uh, in patch 1.1, and I I like the changes. I, I think I think my opinion of Spellblade still kind of low, but speaking of 1.1 for Spellblade, they added a threshold to the top of the Spellblade skill tree, which is flat critical strike chance per 15 intelligence, which is very cool. Like that just enables you to itemize your characters differently. I love stacking stuff up like that. They also give you a uh, percent increased critical strike chance per dexterity. When like dexterity is like this, you know, sub stat, it's like a secondary or tertiary stat for um for spell blades. It gives you some flat damage in some places, it gives you crit chance now, works with morning frost if you're playing Shadow Strike. So I like that they're leaning into that more. Um I haven't seen 
many spell blades that look like relatively tanky. I guess you can do like double red ring plus every defensive item in the game. But uh, one one big change is that the mastery passive for spell blade is no longer ward gain on hit. It's now ward gain when you use a melee attack. So like something like Shatter Strike can have lots and lots and lots of small hits and generate tons of ward. But like they changed that just be like, you know, when you use a skill and hit, which is just like once instead of 20 times. So they kind of tone back the mana, or sorry, the uh, the war generation there because they wanted to tone back the ma the uh, the war generation everywhere. But I think, I think Spellblade's looking kind of squishy. You were talking about builds that uh, can one-shot uh, Abaroth or kill Abaroth within, you know, 10 seconds of it spawning. And I've seen some totally disgusting, you know, ZHP Shatter Strike builds, which are really, really, really squishy. Uh, but they do the job. And Shatter Strike can definitely crank out damage, and you can definitely kill Aberroth before it does its first attack. I gotta look that up. So, what is what is your opinion of Spellblade? Uh, do you like Fire Aura uh, taking up half the real estate of the Spellblade skill tree, <laughs> or do you think that's not a good choice? I like that they're adding utility to Fire Aura in terms of it can be it can replace your Res Shred Blessing, right? You can use it as a as an alternative to then use the rest shred blessing for something else. I didn't even know it did that. Does it? Uh, at five points, you can have f at five point investment. The second from the top there, do you see it? Flame Walker. Read it to me. I have no idea and what it does. Each of your fire auras, after a five point investment okay. threshold, right? Each of your fire auras have the chance to shred enemy fire resistance each second. And it has a 50% chance. So if you stack something like, I don't, I don't remember the math, maybe eight or so fire auras, and obviously you can convert it to be cold or lightning, mm -hmm. so you can get your corresponding element rest shred, so you don't need to invest in the blessing. I think that's neat. I think that's a good utility. Very minimal overall, though. And so still, you know, like you said, taking up half of your passive skill tree with all of this flame aura, fire aura stuff, not great. So I think that side, you're right. It could use a rework. The flat crit bonus per int, I love that. And I think I'm just going to add a little argument on Phantom Grips. When Phantom Grips came out, same with the belt of um, yeah, Harbinger, Harbinger back in the day. It used to have the flat crit. See, it, it almost looks like ESG forgot, and they made a little error and added this flat crit and forgot it's just going to be the best in slot for every single build. It, it certainly is the case. However, I want to make the argument that I think the issue here is that we don't have enough flat crit choices and options. So we are forced oh, yeah. to use these items. And the, the solution should be not to remove the item, but to add more options. And this is, you know, one step towards that. So I think keep the ring, add more items, add more skill choices, add more passive. You know, it, it shouldn't be just like our offhand, the catalyst that gives us 6% crit. Mm -hmm. That's like the best choice if you're a spell uh, caster and you don't have much else. If you're melee, you're very limited, you know. So I want more options. I think the ring is good. I like this prodigy and uh, flat crit per int mm -hmm. that they added. It 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 just gives you more optionality, which is great overall. Yeah, if I um, if I want to play a crit okay. build, if I if I have like my two Legos and I want to connect them, I I only have one connector piece, and that's like prismatic gaze. Don't don't take prismatic gaze away. Add add more different kinds of things so that I can pick and choose which ones I want, lean into like, what's the opportunity cost? Phantom Grip is so good because you're giving up the Crab Ring. Wait, um, the, you're giving up Red Ring of Atleria. You're giving up Osirian, which is deal more damage, take less damage. You're giving up like, you know, an Opal Ring, which is a cool damn recovery speed on it. You're really giving up something. It's not completely free. And I think a ring slot is a really good place for having that flat grid. Yeah, but hold on. Oceron? I thought it was an Oceron. It's an ocean. No, it's... Oh, it, Listen, dude, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Let's, we're gonna, next next podcast, we'll have Judd, the CEO, you know, guaranteed. He'll say yes. We'll have him on. We'll ask him how to pronounce various items. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, hey, I don't know. I call it Osirian. Hey, I make things up in my head all the time, so <laughs> chances I'm, I'm wrong. Chances are I'm wrong. But, um, so where's, where's Spellblade in terms of, like, does it need to be reworked? Is it 
good? How's the damage output? Would I am I willing to play it? Like, yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah, B tier. I, I think I think it needs a lot of love on the survivability. The passive bonuses, the innate bonuses of the class, where you get a bunch of ward when you're casting skills or when you're attacking or whatever. Those are very much, it requires an attack. So when you first go into something, you're just squishy AF, right? You can't do anything, you just mm -hmm. die. There's a ramp up to that survivability. Survivability, there needs to be a huge chunk of default survivability. And sure, let's have some ramp up survivability, but it just feels really awful if a lot of your survivabilities are based on ramp up. You, every time you go from pack to pack, you're starting from a really low point, or if you just start the mono, you might just get one shot. So I'd like to see a, a bit more baseline survivability for Spellblade. Yep. Are, are we putting this in B or C? I, I don't think it's D. It might be D, but I don't think it's D. Given the DPS that we've seen from it, I definitely don't think it deserves D. You know, Marksman, Marksman is never going to kill that boss in 10 seconds. Right, so I, I, yeah, I think B is okay, based B's, on what you B's said. Fine. If it, yeah, based on what you said for the Aberroth kills, I would support a B. And let's just compare it with what we have. We have Sork and Rune Master, the other mage classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly is behind both of them. Yeah, S A B, sure. And it's on par with Druid Paladin Void Knight. Yeah, I think. Sure. I, I think. I think. Classes, it, I think it is on par with with Void yeah. Knight, right? And it's the same as Paladin and Void Knight. It suffers on the survivability front. Ah, oh, good, good. All right, let's yeah. let's uh let's start on our last mastery class. So we have three masteries left for Acolyte. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do this one first. I'm so happy that you're the one doing this tier list with me, because I made a video talking about that stupid belt. And getting 240 flat damage of it. And it got nerfed, baby. So in patch 1.1, there was significant change to Immolator's Ablation, which was one of the offenders for what those Torment builds were doing. And they were scaling to the moon. So uh, Torment got changed. The, the whole suite of things that scale off Necrotic Resistance got changed. Um, ward per second stuff and some of the damage reduction. Ghost Flame got a couple nerfs as well. Uh, I don't think okay, does anything come to mind? Is there anything new that's good? Is there <laughs> is there anything that didn't get <laughs> nerfed? Uh, any new stuff or warlock? Is there any no stuff? Like, there's, there's a ring. There's like a fire uh fire conversion um ring that gives you lots of mobility for wandering spirits. Like that's that's a thing. Yeah, I don't think anybody's using it though. Oh wait! <laughs> Have you seen the videos? Which videos? There's there's a there's a guy out there. I forget his name, um, but he's been posting videos in the official Discord talking about using that particular ring on warlock builds and how much insane mobility it gives to you. Let it me read it you, again. It makes you really really fast because the tormented spirit or the wandering spirit that spawns spawns on your cursor, and then you can like teleport to it using your evade skill. And it off screens your movement. It's, I, it might be something that you enjoy in particular. It's very, very fast. I need to look that up. I don't even, yeah, I like, need to see what that means. When I look works. at that ring, I think about, oh, spell fire damage over time. But when other people look at that ring, they think to themselves, oh, I can just skip the entire map and have more movement speed <laughs> than humanly possible. Like, oh, okay, I guess Zoomies. that's good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. So I'm not going to derail the pod with. These days? How are you feeling? I'm not going to derail the pod talking about the belt. I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I, I was going to respond to your video. I'm just going to say I was going to respond to your video, but I was too addicted playing Dota, so I didn't. Or maybe it was <laughs> really something. I was too busy. Yeah. I was going to do like a 20 minute response. You know, because because I was DMing you about it too. Like I was like, TC, do you really think this is okay? And you're like, Yeah, I do. Can I? Should I give you? Should I give you the short version or do no? You, would you, okay, you know what? I uh, let's. Where do we put Warlock? Because like nothing's really changed. Yeah, yeah, nothing's really yeah, yeah. new. Everything got nerfed just a little bit. As a a tier, it's probably a tier, right? So 
I'm going to say I was completely wrong on Warlock. When I read the patch notes, my first thought was this class is now trashed here. Um, I certainly wasn't going to play it because I already played it last patch. Right, right. right. But given the notes, I was even more so. I'm like, yeah, don't even bother. But I was very surprised to see uh, it's an extremely efficient class for leveling. It does seem like a lot of people played it for leveling purposes. And it was one of the top level 100, you know, racers out there. Obviously behind Blade Dancer and a lot of the road classes. It was probably top two. Super fast skill, yep. Yep. But, you know, other than that, because of how wrong I was, I I want to refrain from adding too much judgment. I thought it would go down to like C tier or something. But clearly I was wrong. Clearly, I was wrong. So I, I gladly accept that I was wrong. I think it's probably more around A or B tier. I like think looking, single looking target. Looking at shaman, blade dancer, runemaster, warlock. Like we're not we're not arranging these from left to right. But like, yeah, right. I think I think warlock is like for sure A tier. Do you think what is the single target DPS on it in terms of killing the boss? I think it probably struggles behind all of those masteries. I have no idea. <laughs> but it's great for clear. I think it's it's fantastic for clear. Okay. But single target is probably behind, is what I would think about that class. So now, now that we have the boring tier list out of the way, you, what? How? You know what? Take the floor. What? Tell me about Emulator's Ablation and how you wish it didn't get nerfed. One second, I'm counting the classes here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We still have two to go. No, we we do. We got two more to go. Oh, do you want to okay, okay. wait? Should we do the it's other two and then nerfed? You know, I don't want to. I don't want to derail. I don't want to derail. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the other two. I know that you and I both have lots of experience on necromancer builds. Um, I, I think I think there's something that we need to talk about when it comes to all of these acolyte builds, which is like like you know they they do good stuff. Like dread shades good. A bomb does stuff. You know, Wraiths is good. I think the underlying thing that you need to talk about for all of these acolyte builds is, um the zombie belts, the, the mm. zombie experimental ethics on potion use on your belt. and That's more of a lich thing though, right? Well, it's, it's a lich thing. You can do it as a necromancer. You can do the stuff on a warlock as well. Uh, you can use the new cruelty relic, which like does some resummoning stuff for you. And you can even do stuff with dread shade as a necromancer, you know, bypassing the, uh, the mana cost for the, the damage penalty on sacrifice. There's stuff that you can do all over the place. And like, I man, that I I think I think you could really just take that out of the game. I think it's really problematic to have experimental zombies spawning whenever you use a potion, especially with like jungle queen uh, chaps, especially interacting with the skill tree, especially procking other stuff or being things that you can sacrifice, sacrifice loops. Yeah, just like I, I think I think the yeah. belt affix uh, probably should not be in the game. Yeah, I would I would like to do this tier list without including that. Yeah, I just like totally forget it. Because like I I've seen it. Yeah. Chat, I've seen it. YouTube, I've seen it. Spotify, I've seen it. Like, don't worry. I've seen yeah. all the videos of people one shotting Aberroth using sacrifice, using um experimental zombies. I get it. I want to pretend like it doesn't exist. It's really dumb. Agreed. So where do we put Necromancer? Twitch chat says Necromancer goes in A tier, or sorry, in S tier. Uh I actually, I don't, I don't think I've seen any Necromancer builds take on Aberroth. I'm sure they're on YouTube. I haven't seen them. Have you seen anyone in your, like your communities playing Necro? Mm-hmm. I've got, I've got no idea. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Flame Wraith destroys Aberroth. Wraith Lord still destroys Aberroth. I, I, I believe you. I don't think Wraith Lord got nerfed enough. Well, yeah, Flame Wraith always used to be a great DPS source. Mm-hmm. It was like a 10, 15 second Jora, maybe even better. So and they nerfed it slightly, so I suspect it's still very viable to get Aberroth with it. Still probably insane. There you go. Yeah. But I don't think it's S tier. I don't I would not put it S tier. I would put it A at best. I think the class it, it does not have those threshold p- passive skill tree bonuses, right? It, they haven't reworked it in a very long time. Okay. So once they do that. I probably it, it probably is gonna get even better, right? Yeah, it's like we're we're kind of straddling the line between like is this tier list for power level or is this tier list for stuff that we want to see updated? But yeah, you know what? I'm I'm okay. Listen, anything to make minions uh, look worse 
I'm on board with it. Yeah, just put him in A tier, get him out of S tier. I don't want it. Is it on par with Sork and Falconer? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm willing to believe that. Okay. Yeah. Falconer and Sork really are totally insane, aren't they? Yeah. I'm okay with that. All right. Yeah. Let's see. We have... what, do, what do you think about Dreadshade, real quick? Uh, I, think... I think it should be the mastery skill that you get instead of rates so that you can actually use it early on. Um, the leveling experience for Necromancer tends to be like, you just kind of struggle bus, use everything that you can, use volatile mm -hmm. zombies, just use stuff until you get to Dreadshade. And then once you get Dreadshade, you're like, oh, finally, I can play my class, right? Yeah, like that's, that's a good point. I don't, I, don't, I don't like that as a design. I don't think that should be... Isn't that, isn't that like the thing that you should get? Like I look at Dreadshade, and then I look at like, you know, Holy Aura, or I look at um, God, what's another good one? Uh, Holy Aura. I guess it's it's more like, do you want okay. your do you want your mastery skill that you get at level fifteen to be a buff skill that enables a bunch of other stuff, or do you want it to be like a DPS skill? Because sometimes you get things like. Uh, dancing strikes, like your 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 dancing strikes is your mastery skill. You get a fifteen as a blade dancer, and no one ever uses it, right? Yep. Or sometimes you get holy aura, where like you get it and you're really happy and you use it immediately, and it's like a big boost to your to your like clear speed or to your, your like survivability and playstyle. So I don't I don't know, I don't think every mastery should get like a holy aura. Like I don't like maybe anomaly should be the mastery class skill instead of a racing strike. You know, maybe Dreadshade should be the mastery class skill instead of Summon Wraith. But it, it definitely feels like you should get it earlier than, you know, level 50 or something. Just because it's yeah. so important for the rest of your uh, your necromancing. Especially when you add the fact that pretty much every single necro build uses it. Oh, there is, I there, don't think you, I've ever You would never a play a without necro it. without it. Yeah. Yep. It's a must-have. So yep. might as well make it the, the signature skill of the... I'm I'm okay. Yeah, cosine, ship it. What do you think about the power level of Dreadshade? OP, just right? Uh, man, I am not the right person to ask for that. What's the power level of Dreadshade? It it just packs a lot in it. Yeah, like you could. It's it's is it is it more egregious than volatile reversal? What do you think about that? Again, I am not the right person to ask about Dreadshade, but how do you feel about Volatile Reversal as opposed to Dreadshade? That's a good question. Honestly, if you're running single minion, it gives you guaranteed crit. It gives you probably more damage multipliers than Volatile Reversal. It gives you more attack speed as well. It, it, it probably is even crazier for single minion builds. I would love to see some nerfs to Dreadshade while at the same time buffing every single minion. Yeah, I mean, like, the, kind of very similar to how many people, including myself, would talk about Volatile Reversal. Like, could we mm. trim some of the damage buffs out of Volatile Reversal and instead just put them into some other skills? Like, right now, yeah. when people say, like, oh, I want to play a Sentinel, but I don't like Volatile Reversal, my honest-to-goodness answer is, don't play Sentinel. Yep. Like you're gonna have a bad time. Your build's gonna have you know a third the damage of anyone else, and you're gonna wonder why isn't my build better? Just like, I want to be a nice guy, but at the same time, I want to save you of if you if you really hate volatile reversal, and I really can't convince you because I love it. Lots of people love it. Lots of people hate it too. So, all right, Agreed. we'll leave it there. We have one more to talk about, and then you can rant. I promise I'll let you rant. We have a lich. Lich has basically no changes at all in patch 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, there, there's like two and a half things that change. Technically, there's a change. I promise it does nothing in the Reaper form skill to me. Uh, Lich has access to a new helmet, which drops from Aberroth, which is the seed of a Kindrasil. It's like a damage taken from mana before health thing. Um, you can combine damage taken from mana before health with things that generate mana. So Rip Blood is great at generating mana. Uh, Harvest, the melee attack, can generate mana as well. And you can use that to like get a nice tanky Lich character. And that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing that really changed was more of a meta shift. So uh, being a life-based Lich is very rewarding for a number of reasons. Not least of which is uh, Death Seal, right? 
So now that like Ward's been nerfed in a bunch of different places, you have more reasons to lean into the real strengths of being Lich, which is being light based, using Death Seal, having 4K life or something, or even having this damage thing from mana as the uh, as the new technology for this patch. So I think Lich is better this patch than it's been in the past. Um, what's your experience with Lich? What have you done? Uh, yeah, so funny thing for me is when I stream, it's always late at night. And when I'm done, there aren't too many people to raid. But frequently I see Mau Mau. You know Mau exactly, Mau, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I've been raiding Mau Mau a lot. And every time I'm like, hey, what's going on in the world of Lich? And he tells me, oh, man, you know, I'm trying the volatile zombies and I hate it. <laughs> but I've already it's tried everything else. So, <laughs> so I, I don't know what to do. So yeah, exactly what you said. Lich didn't get many changes. And Mau Mau's already kind of tried everything he can try. He's just going bottom of the barrel kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Which I appreciate. That's great. Uh, so Mao's Mao's been in my DMs as well, and not not to leak everything that people say to me privately, but he he said like I I hate volatile zombies. He's like this is mm -hmm. way stronger than anything else. It's completely busted. I hope we can yep. get it nerfed. So I I actually think he just published a video as well. So let's let's all rally behind his YouTube channel and get that atrocity removed from the game as well. Just like the atrocity of emulators, but wait, okay. <clears throat> so before, hold on, hold on. Before I let you rant about emulators, Blation, where are we putting Lich? Where do you want to put it? What do you, what do you, I'll ask you another question. Sorry, I'll ask you your question with a question. Do you think Lich needs another skill? Is it getting another skill? Like Paladin is getting a skill, whereas Lich is extra the, skill. The only, the only leak that I know about is the Paladin skill. Um, <sighs> uh, okay, so, so there was a change in patch 1.1 for Lich. And they, they added a node that was like a bleed conversion for Reaper form, which sounds awesome. It really, really sounds good. Because you take the bleed conversion, all the poison stuff converts to bleed instead. Then you take bleed overload in the Warlock skill tree, and you can play a bleed thing. And like, that's, mm, that's really exciting. <laughs> what that node actually does is it only converts stuff to bleed for Reap which is the mm. movement traversal melee thing that you gain access to as a Reaper. It doesn't convert anything else. It doesn't convert poison to bleed for rip blood, doesn't convert poison to bleed global modifiers. It only converts it for reap, which is like so comical. Like why did you add this node and make it so bad and limited in scope and it only applies this one skill? Like just let me play bleed. Let let all the poison nodes in Reaper form apply to bleed. That's all you had to do. And they didn't. It's just oh blows my mind. So yep. yeah, like when I look at Lynch, I, I see that the mastery is it's old. It really has not changed in a very long time. It doesn't have thresholds. It doesn't have double thresholds like Sork does. Um yeah, I <laughs> I, I really wish there was something more spicy to do there. Reaper form is awesome. It's a dynamic play style. It rewards you for knowing when to go in and for knowing when not to go in, for being melee versus not melee. When do you pop your death seal? What do you do when you leave, when you go back to human form? Do you pop death seal in human form? There's some really good like player expertise, you know, finesse moments that go into playing a lich. I, I wish that there were reasons for me to play Lich more often. I want new toys or items or mastery stuff or skills or an update of some sort. Like in, in terms of an update, I, I almost want to put it in C tier. In terms of power I mean, level, definitely not C tier. In terms of power level, like A tier maybe? Maybe like, you know, if, if this were a horizontal um, thing as well, I'd either right. put like, you know, high A or like low, but probably high A, honestly, it's really good. But in but terms of like, the in, in zombies, terms of like, right? which one needs uh, yeah, we're ignoring the, ignore zombies. Good. But in terms of which ones needs update, I kind of want to put in C tier. Yeah, I can support C tier. So here's my thoughts. I completely agree with everything you said on the passive tree. My biggest issue with Lich that I've had for a very long time now is Death Seal, and the way it removes Ward. It completely counter synergizes with everything Ward related. So if you go to your passive tree and search the word Ward. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of ward stuff They're in the it. past. Weird, isn't it? And it's like, okay, well, might as well just delete these nodes because if I'm running <laughs> that skill, which is 100% of Lich builds, oh. I cannot take these. And yeah. It, so there, there's, there's supposed to be support for like an Exsanguinous play style as well. 
Um, the, so there, there's a node that it's not bugged. It's just awful. And it exists mm. in the death seal skill tree. Uh, death seal has a node that says like the, the doom pulse, like the wave thing shreds yeah. necrotic resistance based on how much ward you nice. consume with death seal. And then you can make like the doom pulse happen more often. So, you know, it pops a bunch of times that shred only ever happens on the very last doom pulse. It doesn't oh. have, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't. It, I know it's terrible. Even so, if you do Marco pulse. Yes. Like, even if you. Came... <laughs> no. So there's supposed to be a payoff. And like, is it a bug? Is it old? Was it intentional? Even if it was intentional, could we please revisit Lich at some point and make it? So there's supposed to be a reason to generate like one or 2000 ward and then pop it and gain extra damage and gain, you know, extra necrotic shred and stuff. Like it's, it's supposed to be a thing. And I'm like 99% sure, but yeah. Yeah. I would I would like that. Yeah. So there's war generation. I I want more reasons to have war generation and then consume yeah. the war and turn it into something else. Because using your life as a resource or by extension your ward as a resource is really thematically something that Lich does so so well. Yeah. Or do something like add caps. Especially given that how much synergy uh, the class has with it, you're already stacking into a crazy amount, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to delete your ward. I would love to see death seal rather than delete your ward. Let's say it removes 80% or it caps it at your life amount, given that you're already going to a third of your life. If you cap it to, let's say, a thousand or whatever it happens to be, it's an additional layer of defenses. And all of a sudden you have some synergy with ward. It's not just completely getting deleted. I just think they need to do something. It makes no sense right now. I know, I know I said that we weren't doing a horizontal um, arrangement for this tier list, but I'm going to put Lich at the top of B tier. I think, I think that's the perfect place for it. Also, all right, all right. I want to highlight that. Twitch chat real quick. Someone says, I love an item that lets you convert Lich to cold. Isn't it criminal that there's literally cold conversion that exists in Reaper form? It's already there. In Reaper form? Yeah, Reaper form has a cold conversion. Uh, but you would never take it. It doesn't do anything, but like it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if, only, if only this thing that already exists existed, that would be so good. <laughs> uh, it just it really hammers home like which nodes people have never even read. Because why would you? They don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So like, like I anticipated at the beginning of this, we have a, a lot of builds in A and B tier. We have two builds in S, which is fine. I think that's an appropriate population for S. And then we have like one or two that kind of suck at the bottom. Criminal to me that Forge Guard literally just got updated, but I'd still put it down here. Yeah, I would almost put Lich as an honorary C member just to get that update. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> In in case EHG watches this video, I'm gonna put Lich in C tier. Just like I'm gonna drop it down a bunch, pour one out for Mau Mau X. Yeah. All right, we'll do it. I yeah. I do want to say so. Shaman Shaman got a got like a little facelift in patch 1.0, and it wasn't great yet. But Shaman got a facelift in 1.0. They added the Gathering Storm and the Storm Bolts and a couple skills that synergize with it. They changed the passive tree a little bit, and it was fine. It was fun to explore, but it still kind of fell flat. But then they built on that in patch 1.1. And now we have like new avalanche. We have more synergies, even a better skill tree. They kept working on it. And now Shaman's like, it's a, he's a big boy. And honestly, Forge Guard kind of feels the same way to me. It just, it got a mini facelift in patch 1.1. It's not quite there yet. There's some stuff that's worth exploring. I, I feel like in patch 1.2, or maybe 1.3, but I feel like, like one more little facelift is going to push Forge Guard over the edge. It needs a little bit of something else to really uh, make me want to play it. Agreed. All right. I, I see you absolutely fuming. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to sit back and I want to hear you talk about your favorite belt, Immolator's Ablation. What's on your mind? I, what's, what was on my mind? I was like, I was looking at Necro and I'm like, is Necro really A tier? Do I make, is it, anyway, I think this is good. I think we're good. But that's why I was so focused. I was like. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. 
try to fine tune. Anyways, so let's talk emulators ablation. So yeah, I, I was fuming when when you first dropped the video because I'm like, oh my god, HG are gonna listen to him and they're gonna nerf it. <laughs> I need to come up with a video so that they at least see both sides of the story, so that they don't just because frequently if you only see one side of the story and if they don't necessarily do the the testing or the homework behind the scenes, of course they're gonna go with one side of the story. So I felt obligated to do the video, but again, didn't have the time. Didn't really, yeah, didn't really get around to it. So my thoughts about the belt are, if you look at the history of the belt, prior to 1.0, the belt was at the exact same power level, but it saw no use whatsoever. It was not a thing. Your argument was like, like this belt, it gives you too much. It gave just the same amount prior to 1.0, but it, it, it was just, even at 1.0, nobody had that belt on their radar until I brought it on and it became meta for some reason. And before 1.0, literally the only build that the, the belt was being used beyond the, let's say, 15 stack amount was a Lich Cheese build that I came up with that I thought it would be complete trash, but ended up being pretty decent. But overall, the point that I'm trying to make is the, build, the belt itself to capitalize on 40 stacks is extremely conditional. You need to satisfy so many different things in order to reach that, that benefit. And it's not just like, oh, I get three staffs worth of damage, right? Which is the argument that you were making. I think you also saw that somebody called you out. You had some information wrong. There were certain things that you said. You made an argument about, oh, these things behave in these ways. There's like the other items of, what was it? Um, oh, the, the items that, that convert uh, bleed to ignite. Yeah, yeah, the conversion bleed to ignite. You may we're making the argument that everything else works in this one way, but it was wrong because one of the things works in the exact same way as emulators ablation, and it, it was just something that wasn't tested before the video, right? So there was no precedence either way. It was like half and half. Some things work this way, some things work that way. Lack, it's lack a matter of interpretation. Hard to deal with, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was that as well. Um, but just in general, there are other cases like you look at spark charges, right? We have the spark charge item, and it gives you far more than 240 spell damage. There are people that run 220 int, which is 440 spell damage. Now, is but, that OP? But it's, but it's for a skill that doesn't have a skill tree? Does that feel different so to you? That's my point, though. That's my point. It's extremely conditional. I'm not saying that it's OP necessarily. That is my point. It's similar to Spark Charge offhand. It's extremely conditional to get that benefit. And I personally don't feel that the item itself is crazy powerful. Spark Charges definitely needs some sort of nerf. I'm not sure that it's from the item necessarily. I think more just on the proc side. But the point is like when you have so many conditions that you need to meet and you essentially delete two or three of your skill slots in order to run that belt, you delete two or three of your item slots in order to run that belt to get that 40 stacks. That is not OP, right? The problem was that Torment was OP. Torment was you had a node that gave, gave you a thousand percent more damage if you got like 600 percent necrotic resistance. You know what I mean? Like. It, are we looking at 11xing <laughs> your damage or 3xing your damage with 10 additional conditions, right? Like, how about we look at the thing that 11xes your damage? Well, right? I, think, I think, like, Emulator's Ablation as a belt is something that, like, I've tried to include in builds in the past. And, like, I've, we've used it on, like, Tornado in the past. Like, fire, you know, spell damage over time, Tornado, and you, you spam a whole bunch of it and you get, like, you get, like, you know, 15, 16, 17 stacks. And that's awesome like that's that's a lot of extra flat damage especially when you want to use something like mad alchemist ladle and you want as much flat damage as possible and like right. getting 15 stacks you know like when i played a a divine um what's it called divine <laughs> the skill that doesn't exist uh divine healing, bolt healing hand. yeah like healing hands divine bolt like i had a lot of cat speed i could generate like 18 stacks right 18 stacks right. for like my cat for that and i had as much cat speed as i can get and like that's that's insane right as much cast speed as, as I can get, like using the belt in an honest way, gave me like 18 stacks. Getting 40 just because you're using Spirit Plague 
Whoa, like that's it's such an outlier and it only exists for one build. It's true, but think about it from this perspective. In order for this for there to be a build, you have to meet the condition of having passive damage. Because your active casting is all spirit plague. Therefore, no active cast spell is gonna fit into the build. You cannot be casting three times spirit plague, one right. time brim blood. Right, right. Spirit plague, it doesn't work. It has to be all spirit plague with a passive DPS source. And, and that's just in general, passive sources of DPS have to be kept in check in all AR RPGs. Everybody in every RPG is going to gravitate towards passive sources of damage. The issue here is not like the belt is too powerful. The issue here is that we can ramp up so much and then we have these passive. So honestly, I think one of the issues was also, and I, this was super surprising to me when I tested it, Torment, um, snapshots at when you first cast uh what is that skill called fissure you know so e even if torment originates four seconds into your fissure mm -hmm. it takes your ignite stacks as that casting fissure so it's snapshots and i didn't think it was snapshot when i tested it as soon as i tested it i knew for a fact best in slot is going to be the belt with whatever i was going to run right mm -hmm. but without testing it you kind of expect it not to snapshot right like you're, you're casting your fissure um and torment is an ailment essentially that gets applied maybe two seconds mm -hmm. later three seconds later four seconds later it, you don't anticipate it to snapshot but i think if they made it not snapshot this is all of a sudden not a build and belt is no longer best in slot so there are all these other factors that were going on that made belt best in slot that to me like all the multipliers on the torment skill tree just ridiculous there's one that gives you 11x there's another gives you that 4x there's another bunch that gives you like three 4x you know it, it was just like to the moon multipliers and all these things put together if you delete fissure itself as a skill is this belt and the spirit plague play style no. the only way to play lich warlock and necromancer no, no. I, I think i think it'd be like totally fine so the problem was never the belt it was never spirit playing so when you say it like was the problem was never the belt, it sound, it, you make it sound like the belt doesn't exist anymore do you feel like the belt doesn't exist anymore yes it, really? it it's a minor bonus it is not interesting it is not fun really i still feel like it's it's a good belt doesn't it have cast speed on it too or it's a source of frenzy frenzy yeah so, so it's just not fun anymore. Gives you flat damage. It's got like you know ignite duration and stuff on it. I think it's still a yeah. good belt. It's mediocre at best. That's the point. It's like it's not a fun item to brainstorm around to try okay. and I, come I, up with something that I, you can I hear where you're coming break from. the game with. Sorry, I said I hear where you're coming from. It's like you you want something that that makes the neurons tick in your head, and this is like yeah, no yeah, yeah, longer yeah, yeah. no longer fun. I hear you. It's something that you slap on and you're like, all right, I get 20% increase in my DPS. Yeah, that's always decent. It's solid. Maybe not 20%, maybe like 10 to 15%. I wonder, I feel like I already know the answer. Um, <clears throat> all the new unique items that have procs that are capped at like three times per two seconds, you probably hate all of those. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just like the ones that don't scale Which particularly ones? well with attack and cast speed, like the Celestial Doom proccing that Void Bolt, Bane of Winter proccing the Void Winter Bolt. Like, I, I know they're kind of lackluster, but I feel like for you, you're just like, they're not even on your radar, are they? I honestly haven't thought about them yeah. enough <laughs> to say. So I don't know if I hate them or like them. I just, yeah, I haven't gotten around to it, I'd say. But yes, anytime there's like extremely restrictive caps, eh. It's like, okay, I can see where this is going to go, how much it's going to give me. It's very obvious. Right. So. I've been looking at those items and thinking about, like, what can I do while, like, ignoring the proc or, like, ignoring the, the, the fancy thing it does. You know, I look at Celestial Doom, and it has, like, all that Celestial Doom text on it for the proc, but it also has, you know, gain 500 flat mana if you meet a condition. Or I look at Void Winter Bolt, and it has, like, the Void Winter Bolt stuff with Bane of Winter, and, like, eh. But it also has that interesting text at the very bottom where, like, you know, your flat melee damage applies to your spells. It's like, I, I like when there's interesting text on there as well. I wonder if there's just, like, is there some extra text that we could slap on Amulet as a Blation? Mm. For yeah. sure. A any item can be transformed into just a build-defining item, right? That's what I like to see. 
his items that you, you you can build around and they force you to think, you know, how can I make min max around this specific item and maybe not necessarily break the game, but take some existing build from trash tier to something viable, to something fun, to something that even if it's a little bit one dimensional, let's say you can one shot a boss, but you can't clear for, you know, you can't run any monolith and stuff like that. Even that can be at least meme worthy, right? Mm -hmm. Can be fun. I, it's, I don't really have an interest in playing Path of Exile, which is why I'm not currently playing Path of Exile and I'm doing a podcast with you instead. But like the kinds of absolute nonsense that you have access to in that game, like I get it. The game has been around for a very long time. I used to play Path of Exile. I understand that, you know, the fundamental differences between Last Epoch and Path of Exile. But, you know, you you really could do some absolute nonsense in that <laughs> game. And like Give me a an lot example. of a lot of uh, give you an example, I want an example. because uh, i'm a noob i'm a poe noob uh, <laughs> cast on crit body swap what's a good example um man uh i feel like i'm so out of date like any example that i give you is going to be like literally five years old i probably won't even know what you're talking about so you'll have to explain it as well so uh, pick something simple, sure something sure simple. i'll i'll play I'll, I'll explain a build that that i did a while ago but you had a, a totem build that was not dealing totem damage but it, it needed to have a totem in it it was a um it was a two-part skill that needed to have a, you would like lay down runes on the ground and then you would charge up those runes by channeling on them and then they would explode and the damage was like super super high but you could turn one of them into a spell totem and the totem would do one of the two things for you so that you could you could either put down the rune and the totem would charge it up and explode it or you could mm -hmm. have the totem put down the rune and then you would charge it up and explode it and like you could I, I, it really doesn't sound that cool but like to me it was really fun experimenting with that and like figuring out how to build the characters you know if you want a good example of nonsense we should probably pull up a Jousis video because he's like salutations exile and if you've never experimented I, you're, the smile on your face makes me know that you've already watched his videos, right? Please, I, I please tell so. me you've watched his videos in the past. Can you spell, can you spell the guy's name? J-O-U-S-I-S, Jousis. You know what? I just gave you everything you that you can do for the rest of the night. Go <laughs> browse his videos. They are peak nonsense. <laughs> They're all like the biggest brain uh, lag-inducing builds you could find. They're amazing. He's going to do a better job of uh, explaining the difference than like than I am. What I'm trying to say with this example is that a lot of the things, a lot of like the nonsense in Last Epoch feels like it releases in a state where it's already been rained in, where it's like pre-nerfed or like already kind of watered down, like the procs, right? Or like my example is like singularity. I, I like to have reasons for like going non-crit. So I think non-crit's interesting. One of the things that you mentioned previously on this podcast here mm -hmm. was talking about the Phantom Grip unique ring just being introduced to the game. And like, we want to have more ways to build crit. Well, a different way of addressing that same problem is, well, what if not every build had to be crit? What if you had more options for being non-crit? Like, what if, what if we had like some builds have easy access to crit, so you build them as crit. Some builds don't have easy access, so you could go double Phantom Grip plus Prismatic Gaze, or you could like, be a non-crit hit build but right now we have like ailment versus you know crit and there's no real non-crit and i i just i love elemental overload from path of exile i love the idea of being like a tanky spellcaster or being rewarded for choosing not to include crit in some way but like in last epoch we talked about this with mike when he was on the podcast as well crit's one of those things that's just like gamers love crit gamers <laughs> gamers love yellow numbers that are big and like, even if you don't put crit in your game, the first feedback you're going to get as a game developer is like, okay, this is cool. How do I crit though? Like, it's just, it's just so ingrained into like the mentality of a gamer for an action RPG. It's hard to get away from it. I, I, I wish, I wish we had more support for it. I wish not every build was just like, we need more crits. It's like, well, do you? I wish, I wish, I wish. The way they could do non-crit and at least the way they should do non-crit is if you look at that little idol, it cannot be just, hey, you get x percent more damage if you skip crit it needs to be something that you build towards yes so that it's more complicated than that otherwise it's either best in slot or it's garbage yes 
And you'll make a very similar change to uh, the mastery passer for Void Knight. Instead of just mm. giving you 75% increased damage, it now gives you percent more damage based on vitality. Like, what if, you know, the idol said, you know, you can't crit, you gain more damage per, you know, per two stats of whatever the skill scales mm. with. So, like, if it's an attunement skill, it's an attunement. You know, if it's a strength skill, it's strength. Like, sure, that could be a different route to go about it, too. And it has to be capped, that one. That one has to be capped. Fine. All right. <laughs> I just want to play strength with my cleaver solution and my vessel of strife and my wall of nothing. Just let me play war, dude. Come on. It'll be fun. Don't talk about cleaver solution. Uh, it, it, it got nerfed, and it was a good nerf. It's yeah, yeah, still yeah. like one of those one of those like meta-defining items. It's a fun item, though. Don't oh, you agree? Oh, I totally agree with you. I, I think yeah. it's like giga strong. We do not need a cleaver solution for every separate um, combination of two stats. We don't need like an attuned yeah. intelligence one. We don't need a, a dex strength one. We don't need that. Just like one is fine. It's cute. I don't need anything else. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Agreed. It's it's in a good place right now. I would leave it. I think it's fine. Like it got yeah. nerfed. They took the more damage off it and it's still an excellent item. That tells me it was a good nerf. I think Agreed. that's going to about do it here. Uh, we've been live for just over two hours at this point. TC, Curse, the Curse BG, uh, what are your, like, is there any, like, a final thought, closing thing you want to say? We've got, like, this content, this, uh, this tier list we did here. We talked a little bit about, like, um, like masteries, what's interesting and boring about them, how we're building damage. We talked about items we've used in the past. What's your, like, a closing thought for us? AG. Please buff Marksman, Forge Guard, and Lich. <laughs> Please be gentle with Static Corp. Just, just gentle. Gentle. Be I know gentle. it needs some some hard love, but gentle, please. Please. I, and chat, I... thank you so much. <laughs> Fairy, thank you so much. Go ahead. I, I remember the last time that you were on the podcast and I asked you for closing thoughts. I asked you, like, like what are you most excited for in patch? I think it was like patch 1.0 or something. I said, mm. I said, Curse, what are you most excited for for, for patch 1.0? Are you going to be like Warlock or Falconer? Which one are you? I was trying to get you hyped up. And you said, bug fixes. It's like, well, that's not a particularly exciting answer. It's not like the hype that I was trying to generate with the question. But uh, there's there's a lot of bugs in Last Epoch right now. And I, you know, I, I would love to see thematic updates for these things to make them more interesting. And, you know, I want new Paladin skills too. I'm very excited. But like, you know, um, we've got this reputation in Last Epoch about things being bugged. And it's not a good reputation. You know, it, it's fun to find bugs and report them. You know, it's it is it's fun. You know, every once in a while, I feel like Sherlock Holmes. I don't want <laughs> I don't want every single build for me to feel like Sherlock Holmes. I don't always want to be on a bug hunt. <laughs> ah, come on, EHG. Curse, thank you so much for joining me. I know that this is a, this is a nice Friday evening that you were gonna have to yourself, and I yoinked you out of solitude to join me on the podcast. So thank you so much to um, to you and your wife for letting this be happening. Can I, yeah, I appreciate it. Can I just one last thought oh based God, on what yes. you said? Please, on the bug fixes. I've actually had a, a change of heart. You know, I've been ranting about bug fixes probably for like eight months prior to 1.1. And 1.1 definitely, it, we had some bugs. We had some bugs. But you can see that they're turning a corner. You can see that they're working towards fixing the massive amount of bug pile that existed. And you noticed my, you know, as I wrapped up my 1.0, my wish list was very simple. Bug fixes and balance changes. I was pretty grumpy with 1.0. I did not like it. It was way too many bugs, way too awful of a balance. If you look at the current balance, it's much better. It obviously still needs work, but they've done a lot of great work to rein in the balance disparities and polarization in classes. And they've done great work on fixing bugs. They introduced some new bugs as well, but they were quick to resolve them. And I want to highlight they're definitely moving in the right direction. So I'm optimistic. This time around, I'll have a list that is not just bug fixes and balance when it comes to <laughs> well, when I wrap up we're my We're going to have to have you on the podcast again then. Because this, this has been a lot Thank of fun. So I, th I think Twitch chat likes this. Hopefully YouTube likes this as well. Listen, if you're watching this on YouTube and Spotify after the fact, let us know whether you like this kind of thing, whether you like tier list, having the Curse on here as a guest as well. That's been great. But let us know wherever you're watching or listening so we can make sure that you are watching and viewing experience is as good as possible. 
the curse bg i think it's that is it is it underscore anywhere where do people find you if they're looking for you on youtube or on on twitch the curse bg uh, yeah youtube on twitch same thing i think the curse bg uh i think we we share a lot of our audience so i see a lot of the folks in chat and i know a lot of the the nicknames there i appreciate all of you uh, and I appreciate you, Perry, as well. Everything you do for the community, except for nerfing belts. I except don't appreciate it. Except for nerfing belts. All right, baby. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. If you're watching live, thank you as well. And if you're watching after the fact, uh, thank you. Appreciate you. We'll see you next time. All right. Take it easy, everybody.